and the Stanford Cardinals. And from the farm, a howdy today, beautiful day out on the West Coast as we have the Irish and the Cardinals getting ready, Keith Jackson, Bob Greasy, and Jack Aruth. And today, Bob, I think we have one of the more interesting coaching matchups of the entire season. Two of the best game day coaches in college football that you're going to see, and I think they are the two best uh, calling plays on the sideline. Bill Walsh, of course, with his pro-style offense, passing, short passing, mm -hmm. going at you that way. Lou Holtz, on the other hand, the classic college offense, run but always with a dash of the option the irish come in ranked fourth in the nation undefeated rolling right along nothing spectacular but they do control the football if they win well they do and stanford defensively hasn't stopped anybody all year and for stanford to win their offense is just going to have to score more points and score a lot of points to win the game so we're standing by for the kickoff down on the farm between the fighting irish and the cardinal and here's something for you to think about as we get ready to put it on the field. Parents and teens, age-old rivals, especially when it comes to the car. Parents think one way, kids another. So Liberty Mutual created a safe driving video because kids like videos. Why do we do this? Because we love our kids, too. And our cars. So pick up the video at your local office. Liberty Mutual. Facing the issues that face our customers. Don't forget to rewind. Hey, Tachi. Oh, wait, that's my phone. I'll connect you now. Bonjour. Here are the drawings. Looks good from here. Hello. Okay, thanks. Goodbye. Take care. Au revoir. Hitachi makes digital communication systems and 20,000 other amazing products. Hitachi. Hitachi makes escalators and 20,000 other sophisticated products. Hitachi. Announcing the biggest advance in Quaker State history. It's Quaker State's new advanced high-tech formula motor oil. Superior protection against wear. Superior protection against heat and stress. Superior cleaning power. New advanced Quaker State motor oil. It's formulated for today's high-tech engine. And now, announcing the biggest rebate in Quaker State history. Get a $4.20 cashback rebate to try new advanced high-tech formula Quaker State. As the sun pops out clean and clear now, let's go to the sidelines and talk with Jack Aroot. Well, Keith Bob Greasy was talking about how important the quarterback in the passing game for Stanford is. Consider this about Steve Stentrum. Last year he was sacked over 50 times and a myriad of injuries. Well, the injuries continue again this year. He's already suffering from two bruised shoulders. He's also suffered a bruised knee. Just last week in the UCLA game, he had to take five stitches across the bottom of his chin and already he's had a problem with those. He knocked four of them out during practice. And you know, Bob Greasy, that that can be a problem, especially when you're getting hit from the likes of the Fighting Irish. Yeah, it's a lot safer up here in the booth. <laughs> ABC Sports presenting college football and brought to you by Chevrolet, who invites you to see all the new Chevy cars for 1994. By Hilton Hotel. Hilton, so nice to come home to. By Domino's Pizza, where you can get our new crunchy thin crust pizza and always something for nothing. And by Hewlett Packard Desk Jet and Laser Jet Printers. And of course, this is the hometown, Palo Alto, of the Hewlett Packard industry. Started in a garage. They play on real grass here at Stanford. It's one of the better turfs in the entire country. It's a massive old oval, and if you see a few empty seats, that does not mean we don't have a big house, because we do. This is Stanford at Notre Dame. And over the last few years, it has been a dramatic uh, series. The visiting team, as we noted for you, has won the last four games. 
Stanford back at South Bend last year laid a whooping on the Irish 33 16 and I would imagine that's been uh, the constant theme of the week from Lou Holtz and his coaching staff. In fact, Keith, that is the last game that Notre Dame has lost. They have won 11 in a row going back to that Stanford loss. Stanford will be receiving the ball. Mike Mitchell, 32, freshman out of Phoenix. Greg Camella, number 34, freshman from Wellesley, Mass. Kicking for Notre Dame will be Kevin Pendergast, the senior from Simsbury, Connecticut. So we cover the country with a kicker and the two receivers. But these are two universities that recruit their football players and their students on a national basis. They're both private universities, of course, relatively unique in their own sense. And that only adds, I think, to the interest of this particular college football team. Notre Dame in the white, Stanford in the red, and we're ready to play. The officials, a mixed crew of the Pac-10 and the East. A yard deep in the end zone, Mike Mitchell. Pretty cute little move there, and it's worth about seven more yards as he comes out to the 29-yard line. And here is number 18, Steve Stenstrom, who's 19 and 6 as a starter. That is the second best winning percentage in school history and they have had some notables at the quarterback position over the years here justin armor number 80 it will be one to watch as to how notre dame proposes to take him away from the offense and if they can do it they will have removed one of stanford's prime weapons he's a lanky fellow at about six six the first snap is a pass it's thrown to the sideline, complete to Ethan Allen out of the backfield, and it's good for about seven yards on the play. The offensive front for Stanford, and these are the people who have to play well, and in particular, Seth Dittman, because he is the weak side tackle or the left tackle who has to protect the quarterback's back. And if he doesn't, then people like Jim Flanagan are going to get a piece of it. His name is Seth Dittman, so put that down and remember it, because Flanagan is on that side, and the Notre Dame defensive man is the one who comes after him. Back goes Stenstrom, his pass is completed to Armour, and Armour is short of the first down by about two yards as Jeremy Sample steps in to make the defensive play. As we look at the Notre Dame defense, Sample is part of the story here. Here's Flanagan, number 44, a defensive end over there from a linebacking position, which says he's a little quicker than your average defensive end. Jeremy Sample is out there because of injuries to uh, Versich and Anthony Peterson. Neither one of those players are here. It is third down and about two for the Cardinal, and they will run it. And it is good for the first down as Elderly Roberts. Yep, old elderly carries it for the first down. Bobby Taylor made the hit for Notre Dame. The defensive secondary, there's Taylor number 21. His daddy was an Olympian, silver and gold medalist. But the secondary for Notre Dame is a, a bunch of hitters. I mean, they will knock your hat off. And Taylor may be the fastest of the bunch, but there's almost an extraordinary player back there in Jeff Burris, number nine. They're all good. It is first down for the Cardinal. The ball is up at the 42-yard line. And center and back here comes planning in the passes away. They've got a screen set up for number 25, Ethan Allen. And Allen breaks it big down to the Notre Dame 42-yard line. Bill Walsh, his short passing game, loves the screen pass. The first 20 or 25 plays are scripted. He has come out and thrown on running downs and passed on, and, and he's passed on running downs and thrown on running downs. And here you go right here with a little screen pass. Big first down, nice drive so far. The ball rests at the Irish 42-yard line. Allen is out, Nathan Olson is in. That's the son of Merlin. Number 40. And that usually means run. And I think they burned the clock. Either that or somebody started too soon, but there is no play there. The whistle stopped it before they got it rolling. Bill Richardson is the referee. So too much time. Delay of game. Here's what uh, 
kind of to expect from this game today. Notre Dame wants to control the ball offensively with their ground game. It matches well because uh, Stanford defensively against the run is 103rd in the country. Stanford, on the other hand, needs some uh, big offensive day. You're seeing it here. They're going to do it first with their passing game, and their passing game is going to set up their run, but they're not very good at running the football. So they absorb a five-yard penalty, make it first down and 15. Olsen is out, and Allen is back, and Stenstrom drops the throw. Pretty good protection, goes down the side for Armour, and it's off his hands, incomplete, defending his Bobby Taylor. So they have done what we thought they might very well do, and that is have Taylor track Armour, at least in the early going. Armour is lined up inside, and the two receivers cross. Armour was at a tight end position. Bobby Taylor outside. And just good coverage. And that ball was really not a catchable ball. It was thrown out of bounds. And uh, good coverage by Notre Dame and Bobby Taylor. Second down and 15. This is the first possession of the ball game. Stanford having accepted the kickoff. This is number 33, Robert. Pretty good turn on the corner. He moves well as he comes to about the 37. Bobby Taylor again coming from the quarterback position to make the tackle. Keith Bill Walsh was telling us yesterday they're going to run this sweep, but it's a weak side sweep. You got to watch right here. Watch as the back is going to come in and get the block, and the two guards will pull. This is like a pro sweep that a lot of the college players don't see that back blocking the first man outside. They ran it pretty well. Yes, they did. Third down and four for Stanford. The ball at the Irish 36-yard line. The Cardinal trying to get something early in the game. They need all they can get. Stanford gets some heat. Gets the back at the 44-yard line by Ronaldo. Win number 48. Now, John Parker at our studio in New York. Keith, NC State and Clemson in the ACC. Seven seconds left. Perry Harvey back to pass. One last gap. It's batted away by Tim Jones. They wind up on the 16, but can't score 2014. Meanwhile, UTEP still leading North Carolina by three in the third quarter. We'll keep you updated, Keith. That would be a stunner. UTEP gets Carolina if they can hold on. They go to the front with Aaron Mills getting the kick away. All rolling inside the 10. Stanford will down it around the Irish 8. There, Notre Dame will go to work. Not very good field position, a very effective punt by Aaron Mills. So the Irish get their first possession of the ball at 11 minutes and 38 seconds to play in the first quarter. And here's the Irish quarterback, Kevin McDougal, 6'2", 194, senior Pompano Beach, Florida. Hasn't been particularly outstanding, hasn't been spectacular at all, but he has been very consistent and very resourceful and very dependable. Kinder starts at tailback. That's a bit of a story. A freshman in at tailback for the Fighting Irish of Notre Dame. They give it to the fullback. Zellers and the junior out of Pittsburgh bangs his way up to about the 12. Up front for the Fighting Irish, Aaron Taylor is from Concord, California. That's just across the bay on the Oakland side, a little north of there. But this is a big, solid, experienced offensive front for the Fighting Irish. Second down and six. The Zellers picked up four yards on that first carry. McDougal pitches it to Kinder, the freshman. Here he comes around the corner. He's a burner. And he's going to have a first down as he hits the 23-yard line. There are a lot of holes in this Stanford defense. They are ranked 103 defensively and 102nd against the run. Their mainly, their problem is a lot of young players, and when the older ones have finally gotten a chance to play, they haven't. There's no game experience there. So Notre Dame, who runs the ball very well, has got to have some huge eyes coming into this game. On first down from the 23, ball goes to Kendra again, but it up the middle. 
That's Willie Clark, number 32. Clark steps into the ball game. Willie has been playing in the defensive secondary, and now he's back at tailback, so that's the third position change for him in the last three years. The defense for Stanford. The down people are there. Outside, we just had one man hurt. Brian Batson left the ball game. Looked like he might have sprained an ankle. The outside uh, backers for Stanford are both freshmen. Kinder is back in now, apparently bringing a play with him. But it looks like something they've been running right along and something you're going to see him running all day long as he tries for the first down behind the left tackle, Taylor. So it's close for the first down. Now they'll move the chains on the official signal at 10.13 to go in the first quarter. And the Irish now have put some room at their back as they have picked up successive first down. To look at Batson on the sideline, Keith, and as you mentioned, it looks like it's his lower leg, possibly an ankle, that has forced him out of the game. that time by the Stanford defense as they ran through the blocking of Zellers just simply outnumbered him with Norwood and Walker the strong safety coming up for a piece of the action temperature today probably will get to the 80 mark around the, in the low 80s the forecast has been for much higher temperatures but the sun was late getting out today as we had haze hanging around till almost noon very comfortable day on second down 10 that google's first pass of the day is caught by mike miller miller is on the sidelines and finally run down at the 20 yard line david walker the strong safety it looked like Stanford had it defended, but Wall Miller just went up and got it. Uh, Holtz has been calling running plays the entire first series, and now when he's got him think and run, play action pass, and this is a good throw by McDougal, right where he had to have it, and he threw it on Davis, making his first start at cornerback for Stanford. But a nice uh, connection. Davis, little in, little out. Davis, the corner, doesn't get there, and a great catch and run by Miller. He's a big play guy. Good for 46 yards in first down, Notre Dame, just shy of the 20. This is Randy Kinder. He is a freshman from East Lansing, Michigan. A fact that pains George Perlis, I'm sure, considerably. Here's Jack Arruden. Well, Keith, it seems to be open season on linebackers. First one out that we did not cover was John Sims. Sims has a problem with his knee, and what they're going to do is tape it. He is cleared to continue to play. The same cannot be said for Brian Batson, however. They're going to take him for x-rays to the rear portion of his leg down by the ankle. Second down and eight. The ball resting at the 19. Willie Clark is back in at tailback for Notre Dame. McDougal sets up and throws the sideline pattern to Lake Dawson. Dawson is held and dragged out of bounds at about the 14-yard line of Stanford. Vaughn Bryant, number four, was there to make the play. Bryant is the experienced man in that secondary. This is his uh, 28th start for the Cardinal. He's a fourth-year senior, and he is a he is the senior uh, man in that secondary, and he's he's the one that got lead some, some leadership. The other cornerback on the other side, Elio Swinton, has a hamstring. He was a true freshman, and that is why Davis was starting at the other corner. Oscar McBride checked in at tight end for the Irish. That normally means run. Give it to Zellers. Cuts it in the middle inside the 10 to the 9-yard line, and that will be a first down. So it's first and goal, Notre Dame at the Stanford 9. So they're doing just about what we thought they would. Run, run, throw. Run, run, throw. And they have moved it from their own 8 down to the Stanford 9. Notre Dame has scored 16 of the 19 times they have been inside the 20-yard line. Possession and he goes in from nine yards. 
play starts off this way. Well, watch the block of this man right here. It's almost designed to come inside, but he ends up going outside. See the man at the bottom blocking out? There's a huge hole inside there, and Clark, with the great speed, just says, I, I can beat him to the end zone going around. Pendergast out of McDougal Cole, the starting quarterback, does the holding for the extra point. Ten plays, 92 yards. It's 7-0 Notre Dame. Sky of the central coastal region of California. Palo Alto. Stanford Cardinal will get the ball from the Irish as Notre Dame goes 92 yards for the go-ahead and first score of the day. On 10 plays, 6 minutes and 58 seconds left to play in the first quarter. The Irish coming in, ranked fourth in the nation. Mike Mitchell, number 32, and Greg Camella, number 34. They are the two deep people for Stanford. Mitchell is the man they like to have the ball. They kick it away from him, kick it to Camella. And he is short of the 25. Tomorrow night on ABC starts with America's Funniest Home Videos, then Raven Simone guests on the new America's Funniest People, followed by Lois and Clark, the new adventures of Superman. Then on the Sunday night movie, Kate Jackson and Lori Loughlin star in Empty Cradle all tomorrow night on ABC. Stanford comes up, same people in the alignment. Justin Armour, number 80, will be well wide out in this series. Tony Klein is in at the tight end position. And they send Ethan Allen in motion. Simpson looking to throw. Taken down at the 15-yard line. Ryan Hamilton, number 90, 275 pounds senior from Chicago. If the Stanford offensive front can't handle Notre Dame's defensive front, it's going to be a long afternoon. Well, you're going to have big problems. Uh, Stanford was sacked by UCLA six times last year. They've already been sacked 17 this year, and they are last, right here, they are last uh, in rushing the ball and protecting their quarterback for the Cardinals. Second down and 17. A little play action, trying to set up the screen. There it is for Allen. He's upended up around the 21-yard line. The man getting up on the play is John Covington, number 29, the strong safety. Put it on the 21, call it third down at about 12. Washington Huskies are playing San Jose. That game is in Seattle. You've got a couple of ball games in the Pac-10 today that'll have some meaning postseason circumstances, Oregon and Cal both undefeated, one of them. Kenan Tatum checked into the ball game for Notre Dame. And Stanford will throw again. There's Armour. He's open. That's good. First down, 45-yard line. He doesn't look like he's that fast, but he's a lanky guy, and he moves it pretty well at 6'6", 215. Well, they're trying to hide Armour. Here's a motion man right here. He's going to come over to the two wide receivers. Armour is right here. He's going to sneak out from this side over here and beat the man on that side. He's going to run a little down and out. This is good throw. You don't have a lot of room to work with, but maybe moving the hash mark in a little bit this year helped him complete that pass. Tends from now five out of six, 53 yards. By the running play, sweep it to the left side, give it to Robert. And Robert from the 44 up to the 50 for six yards. There's two things about the, the Stanford possessing the ball. One, as long as they have it, they've got a chance to score. But the point is, they need to have it yeah, a lot. Yeah. And they need to have it last. Left, yeah. <laughs> Midfield. Second down and four. Now the Cardinal. Robert Sweet. Well, that's working pretty well, isn't it? That's the old Green Bay sweep. Back block down, two guards pull. Something a little bit different college uh, defenses don't normally see. This will tell you very distinctly about Stanford offensively. In the nation, they are the sixth best passing team, and they are four from the bottom in running the football. Jerry Vesample brought uh, down the rough ball carrier. 
junior from Woodbridge, Illinois. The ball rests on the 46-yard line. It's third down in the short yard with Olsen. Look out for something here. Third and short. Olsen tends the block. Out they go for it. Get Ellery outside, Ellery Roberts. And he was within uh, a breath of breaking a big play, but Greg Lane, number 33, the cornerback, smelled it and stopped it. But he did get the first down. Three minutes and 39 seconds to play in the first quarter. Roberts now five carries, 27 yards. The ball rests at the 43 of Notre Dame. First down for Stanford at the Irish 43. They run the ball with Ellery Roberts. Moving across the 40 to the 37. The Irish leading Stanford 7-0 as we wind into the last three minutes of the first quarter of play. This is the middle of the day out here on the West Coast, of course, and toward the end of the day in the eastern part of the country where you've already seen a lot of football, including, uh, some of you, a spectacular game up at the Carrier Dome in Syracuse. Second down and five for Stanford. Allen goes in motion and Steve Stenstrom. Looks and looks and throws down the middle. Got his man. Give him that much time and he will pick your bones. It'll be first down. Stanford at the Irish 26-yard line. And making the catch again is Justin Armour. Armour and Taylor. You saw the man go in motion right there at uh, Allen. Now he just slides to the inside, does Armour. Between the linebackers, the picket fence, their zone linebackers dropping in there. And if you give Stenstrom time... He'll complete it. Armour's got three now for 37. Here's Armour again. Far wicked hit by John Covington. And I don't know if he's going to get up. He's going to need a little help getting back to the huddle because he was really had a lick laid on him. Short, quick passing. This is a slant. You throw this one between the linebackers. And right here, Burris comes. Burris has been a big-time player in that secondary. Covington hit him. Covington hit him, yeah. Excuse me. Big guy. They got to take him out. I don't know if Justin knows uh, just exactly which which town he's in right now. He came in averaging over seven receptions per game. First down, the ball is just inside the 13-yard line. They give it to Ellery Roberts, and Roberts hangs down, posted up high. That's a good cut run. And this time, it is Jeff Burris that bails out the Irish defense. He stepped into the middle and stopped him. So Stanford with his first real scoring threat of the day, trailing in the ball game by seven to nothing. Now they're sitting there with second down and three, the ball at the six. Stanford has been perfect inside the 20 as Bill Wallace looks for the next play. If this one doesn't work, he stays a play ahead. Armour is back at a wideout. Uh, that wasn't going to work because uh, Roberts and uh, Stenson ran together on the handoff and uh, his momentum was stilled before he really got started right here let's pause five seconds now so our abc stations across the country can tell you who they are this is wxyz tv channel seven detroit the ball uh, half a yard loss on that last carry make it third down and call it four Third and a long, long three. By any means. Notre Dame, long three short Notre Dame Keith has gone to five defensive backs to try and slow down this passing attack. And down the middle, knocked away by Taylor, intended for Armour. Bobby Taylor. That was a good play. With Justin Armour, it was batted down by number 21, Bobby Taylor. Well, this time, Armour is going to be shadowed by Bobby Taylor, their best defensive back, from the opposite side. Good protection, and Taylor just stays with it. That'll be a good matchup all day long. They will accept the point opportunity. They will try the field goal with Eric Abrams. 23 yards. Chris Burke, the holder. The left footer gets it up and gets it through. It's now 7-3 for the day. 31 seconds to go in the corner. Game will choose the Chevrolet, most valuable player of the game from each team, 23rd year. The Chevrolet Scholarship Program 
has been in effect with each general scholarship fund getting a $1,000 gift from Chevrolet. Clint Johnson, number eight, is the deep man back there. Aaron Mills will be kicking the ball to him. Johnson is a wide receiver. And he likes Mike Miller of Burner. Seven to three as the Cardinals get off the board with a 23-yard field goal, and that's a dandy kick by Mills. <laughs> All the way to the back of the end zone. No return. Can you just go back and take a look at that last third down play going for the touchdown. Here is Armour right here. He's lined up as a tight end. Now the other routes are going to be out here, and he is going to run into the end zone. But look what Notre Dame has done. Bobby Taylor right here has found him, and he is going to shadow him wherever he goes in certain situations. Their best defensive coverage guy, Armour, the wide receiver, hiding at tight end. Taylor, the cornerback, finds him and covers him. Randy Kinder is the tailback. McDougal gives it to him. Here's the youngster from East Lansing with the speed, and he slashes his way up to where they're marking. 27-yard line, where he first bounced. So that's a pickup of seven yards. Nice drive here, huh? First down. Six minutes, almost six and a half minutes, 13 plays. The only downer for Stanford is that they didn't get to seven. They had to settle for three. As long as they are within four points of Notre Dame, we've got a game. <laughs> <laughs> End of the quarter. And it's 7-3 Irish. We go to the second quarter of play, Stanford Stadium. Notre Dame leading Stanford by a score of 7-3. to three. Derek Mays is a wide out. And Mark Edwards is in the backfield for Notre Dame. McDougal gives the ball instead to Zeller. And the big fullback just bangs away. Poor tackling, Keith. They got to yep. wrap their arms. It's uh, Zeller's is big. Take a look at the first quarter stat. Stanford has uh, 19 plays to only 11 for Notre Dame. In the bottom, we've got a scoop here. Time of possession, almost 2-1 to one in favor of Stanford, but the thing that's not on there, Stanford has had the ball two times, and Notre Dame just once. This is their second possession of the game. So it's first down from out around the 31-yard line, and pitch it back to Kinder. Kinder coming around the corner. And taken out of bounds at about the 37 by Kevin Garnett, who's making a lot of tackles this year. He is the free safety. Interesting, Keith, that in that first quarter, we had three, only three possessions. Two for Stanford and one for Notre Dame. That means the defenses aren't doing a good job of stopping them. Uh, sometimes you'll see five and six possessions where it's three plays and a punt. Uh, nice drive by Notre Dame for a score, and then Stanford had two offensive drives down and got the field goal. Second down and four. Back it goes to Kinder. He's got the first down. He's got a lot more and came within a shoot-up of breaking the touchdown run. Looks like Brandon Davis might have been the fellow who got just a piece of his foot. Watch from the right side. The guard and tackle are going to pull across. Right there, good blocking at Norman 66 and Leahy 72 getting nice blocks. And Kinder, he's got some speed, and that's what Holt wants to get in there. That was Garnett getting a piece of the shoe top. Willie Clark is in at tailback. Give it to the fullback, Mark Edwards. Boy, oh, he's another big chunky guy freshman out of norwood ohio 220 pounds and he picked up almost the first down that big offensive front for notre dame came in averaging nearly 200 yards a game on the ground it's just dominating that uh, front five front seven of stanford second down and one close to the 30 and has the first down for the Irish. Toby Norwood gets the call on the tackle. Toby Norwood is really the leader of that group out there. He is fifth in the conference in tackles. Uh, 
He walked on a few years ago. Is really an overachiever. And Fred Von Oppen says he is really a great kid and really the leader, inspirational and otherwise, of that defense. Dribbles looks to throw, wanted to go deep. Pass is incomplete, and there is the play. Covering on the play is Garnett, covering Zellers, and uh, he gets flagged for interference. Give you an idea of how well the Notre Dame front is protecting is he had all day. I mean, he waited and waited and waited and waited for the second man. Well, the reason he has all day is because the running game has been working. And when you run well, and then you play action fake, and then more than that, you got a clear lane to throw through. Normally, you can't see very well. That's a good call. The left arm of Garnett pulling on Zellers. I don't think he would have caught it anyway. You don't know. I don't know how good a receiver Zellers is. He came in with six catches on the year, but clearly a good call by the official. 15-yard penalty makes it first down at the 15-yard line of Stanford. Irish leading 7-3, to three, bidding for more right here. Willie Clark is behind the line of scrimmage. David Walker, the strong safety, blitz. He started, stopped, stuttered, then came and got advanced. Here's what you're talking about, Keith. Von Oppen, the defensive coordinator. This is a strong safety blitz. And this is one of the things that an offensive team is not looking for. And that is one way on first down to throw him for a loss, get him in second and long. Second and 12. McDougal keeping the option play. He will score. Colorado killed him with that option play. Every one of Colorado's points resulting from the option. And here, Notre Dame ran it. Bingo. Touchdown, 17 yards. Shades of Michigan. They don't run the option very often, and they have different styles. 98 is Phillips. He's guarding the pitch man. Good blocking out front. McDougal can run this all day. Mark Edwards was the, got the kick out block that opened the lane for him to get it into the end zone. Pendergast for the extra point. Remember, the starting quarterback does the holding. Kick is good. It's 14 to 3. Eight plays, 80 yards. And this uh, Stanford defensively has really backed them up. They haven't had any short drives. They've gone 92 and 80 yards. All, uh, all those plays were running plays. And, of course, the one... One penalty was uh, one one pass play was wiped out by the penalty. They've uh, they haven't stopped them and they haven't slowed them up. That's Mitchell. And Mike Mitchell, the freshman, gets it out to the 24-yard line for Stanford, and there the Cardinal will go to work. Here's a look at today: five different. Men have carried the ball. They are averaging 6.6 .6 yards per carry. And that is tremendous for an offensive team and horrendous if you're the defensive uh, coach and trying to stop an offensive team. All right, they make armor obvious here. He's at a wideout. There are three wideouts in the ball game for Stanford. Steve Stenstrom hands the ball off to Ellery Roberts. Down at the 25. Defensive uh, flow was just compelling, and he got very little out of it. Bad news now for Stanford. Brian Batson has a fractured ankle. So he's gone for some time. He is the freshman outside linebacker that had started the last three games, and they were thin at that position before his injury. Yeah, Tommy Connect, uh, who was the backup at that spot, he's hurt. And the screen, Roberts has this one. Turns it upfield with authority and picks up a first down before Kenan Tatum brings him down. Kenan Tatum is another uh, uh, 
fellow coming back off the injury list for Notre Dame had a hamstring pull against Purdue. But the one guy, his absence really shows up is Pete Bursich. Uh, yeah. He had a shoulder separation. He's out of action for a while. Bursich was really the leader. He and Anthony Peterson, the two linebackers, uh, two seniors on that group, both of them are out with injuries, will return this year, just giving Notre Dame an opportunity to play some of the younger talent. This is the freshman Mitchell into the lineup. He gets around the corner and picks up a first down. He moves for 11 yards before they bring him down. So here comes the the bigger, quicker kid into the lineup, and you will get acquainted with him before his career is done. Talking with Walsh yesterday, he was saying Notre Dame is so so well coached fundamentally, and they're so disciplined that they're going to play off of that. They're going to take advantage of the fact that if you pull a lineman, an offensive lineman, they know that that defensive man is trained to follow him, and they're going to have the back come in and knock him off and run around him. So they're going to go counter because Notre Dame is so well coached fundamentally. David Shaw is a wide out. That ball is loose, rolling around on the ground, and the Irish almost get a handle on it. Stenstrom, however, was able to recover it. But number 48, Ronaldo Wynn, almost came away with that thing for Notre Dame. Keith, that was a toss from the eye formation. And I think the ball hit the fullback's hand yep. before he could get the ball to the tailback. There needed to be a little bit of separation there between the fullback and the tailback, and the fullback actually knocked the ball away. And it comes all the way back to the 39, where it is second down and 19. Notre Dame doesn't need any help. <laughs> Benson finally gets his pass away, and the intended target is double team. That is Justin Armour. Well, he stared at Armour for a long time he before he threw it. What that does for his receiver is that he gets punished. <laughs> And you're right, because there was one of the safeties, whether it was Burris or Covington, really saw him looking at armor and came hard to him. Stenson now is 8 of 11 for the 90 yards. At 10.24 to go in the first half, Notre Dame leading 14 to 3. Roberts is back into the backfield. Third down and 19. Stenson passes away. Pass is completed to Shaw. And Shaw is taken out of bounds at the 49, not anywhere near the first down, and they'll have to punt it. Nice pass, nice completion, but also a nice play by the defense where you just come up and make the tackle. Look at this. In seven and a half years under Holt, they've returned 18 kicks for touchdowns. They've done it already once this year against the University of Michigan. Mike Miller, the man who did it, is back under it, waiting. Aaron Mills will punt it. Pretty good coverage by Stanford. Flying down the field is Kwame Ellis, who was a starting cornerback, lost his job, and he's working now on special teams. Northwest of Kalispell, Montana, there's a place where you can punch cattle instead of a time clock and discover what horsepower is really about. It's the Hargrave Cattle and Guest Ranch, where you can ride them and rope them like they used to. But if you go, you got to pull your own weight and pull out your beaver card. Because at Hargrave, they don't take the tin horn and they don't take American Express. Visa is everywhere you want to be. I'm getting older, so I have to push myself just a little bit harder. Introducing a new, hard-working power stick. Now with more odor fighters per stroke than ever. Hey, that's better for me and everybody else. New power stick from Fabergé, the most powerful power stick ever. While virtual reality isn't quite here yet, the car is the new Accord from Honda. If the communications data isn't programmed right, 5,000 troops could be cut off. But I'd never let that happen to my brigade. 
tear the nation's number one team. But what Florida State really wants is to finally beat number three, Miami. It's the biggest game of the season next Saturday at noon on ABC Sports. Notre Dame gets the football back. First down at their own 17-yard line, leading by a score of 14-3. to Coming into the ball game, ranked fourth in the country. They've won 11 in a row. Their previous starting points were the 8th, they went 92 yards. The 20, they went 80 yards. And now on the 17. And that's Willie Clark at the 20. Willie Clark is a senior out of Wheatland, California. And he has just been on a merry-go-round between defensive secondary and the offense. The he tailback has, Keith, and he's too good an athlete not to be playing somewhere. They moved him to offense, and he, and he fumbled a couple of times in practice and last week against Purdue. So they're getting him in early this week. Give him a little confidence, with the, especially with the injury to Beckton. He's out with a hamstring. Blake Dawson just came hobbling off the field, too, for Notre Dame as McDougal pumps it. Let's it go. Uh, let me rephrase that. Tries to let it go. John Hebert busted McDougal pretty good. Oh, that's got a roar from the home folks. Hebert was working against the pretty good center, too. And Ruddy right here. Watch these two men right here. Ruddy is the center. Hebert, 71, playing over the nose, over the uh, center. Just going to bust right up there. That was the right guard that picked him up. Leahy. Stanford only has two sacks on the season. Not only do they not protect their own quarterback very well, but they have not sacked the opposing quarterback. Obviously, that was an incomplete forward pass. Dawson is back in the, on the field. And the officials stop it, and it's a timeout charge to Notre Dame at 8.59 to go in the first half. See the expanse of this great old oval. I imagine that crowd's going to be 80,000 we get the final count. Into the backfield for the Irish now. Number four, Lee Beckton. Beckton pulled a hamstring in the practice prior to the Purdue game. Did not play last week. But he's fitted up to be in there. And back goes McDougal to throw it. And it is incomplete. Intended for Derek Mays. Thrown over his head. Sanford again got a little pressure on him. And now the Iris will have to punt. And that's the moment of revelation. It's got to be a big boost for Sanford and Von Oppen. The first time they've stopped both uh, three plays and out uh, after the two uh, long touchdown drives in the first two possessions. Rob Leonard is the punter, and back is Leroy Pruitt, a freshman from Lee's Summit, Missouri. Rob Leonard, incidentally, is a non-scholarship player doing the punting for the Irish. Pruitt has a very bright future. I really like his athletic ability and his foot speed. Not going to have much of a chance to do Well, I don't know about this. He, I thought he called a fair catch. I, I thought he did, too. And he, uh, yeah. Uh, yeah. So did the official. Yeah. yeah. yeah they <laughs> it was one of those uh, halfway yeah. invalid ones. 36-yard <laughs> <laughs> punt. They got to bring it back and uh, add some on to the punt. Pruitt forgot all of, he had all that open space around him, and he forgot he'd called a fair catch. Well, he called it too early, you know. Uh, he's a freshman, and he hasn't done this too much. Uh, watch the uh, top left of your screen. That's going to be Pruitt up there. Now watch how early he gets it. Right there is the signal. You're supposed to, you're supposed to do it above your helmet and wave it from side to side. He didn't do that. That is an invalid fair catch signal to begin with, and uh, you're confusing them. And when you uh, any if there's any question, that official's going to call it. Well, the Notre Dame people coming down on coverage obviously saw it, and the rule is you've got to give him two yards, the freedom to catch well, the ball. I mean, there was no question about that. <laughs> he just made up his job. He made up his mind too early. Uh, <laughs> too much room. Uh, Holy smoke. I mean, he's run. a young man with a lot of talent. And both of these teams had great recruiting years playing some freshmen. They're going to be good, but they're going through some growing pains. Taylor comes right up and goes nose to nose with Justin Armour and a whistle. Somebody probably moving. Because there was 12 seconds left on the uh, play clock. Dead ball. Dead ball. Ball start. Start. Yep, ball start. start. Oh, they lose another five. 
Well, we'll show you what's going on around the country today of Florida State. Big winner, Alabama plays tonight. Miami is tied, Notre Dame and Florida. Both are ahead, the Florida one. Nebraska's not playing. Nobody really losing or in danger. First down and 15 now for Stanford. The ball back on the 34-yard line. Sends from back. Pretty good protection. Throws incomplete. Trying to get back to the ball was Justin Armour, and he had been fended off quite well by Bobby Taylor. In the Pac-10 today and tonight, Oregon and California across the bay. We told you that's a battle of unbeatens, and that is a startling score. 24-0, the Oregon Ducks leading California. Oregon State, the 6-0 over Arizona State. That's a bit surprising, but that's quite early. USC Arizona goes tonight. Washington State is playing Pacific. But the Oregon beating Cal 24-0 in the second quarter. People out in the West will see the Southern California Arizona game. On the West Coast in uh, the Western states, including Arizona following our game here in Palo Alto, California. Ethan Allen with the ball there. Not much doing on that one. It is still third down at about 15. Make it third down and 16 as the ball comes back to the 33 with eight minutes to go in the first half. not thrown the ball to Brian Manning yet today. We've not seen it. Kenstrom gets his pass away. Pass is in the middle of the field. Pass is completed to Tony Klein, the tight end. But it is well short of the first down by at least two yards, and it'll bring up fourth down for the Cardinals. Tony Klein was a huge uh, personality in their win, the comeback win over Colorado. They may go for it here, Keith, on fourth down. Nope. nope. Looks like uh, Walsh may have thought about it. But you're right. Uh, Klein uh, has uh, has been a big factor, as all tight ends do in uh, Walsh's system. Mills to punt. Miller back for it. He called a fair catch, too, real quickly. And the reason was they had a punt block on, and he knew he'd have no help. 39-yard kick, even seven minutes to go in the first half. Notre Dame trying to add to their winning string, and as noted there, Stanford, the last team to beat them, after Notre Dame jumped out to a 16 to nothing lead at South Bend, and then the Cardinal came back to... 33 unanswered points. First down and 10 from the 17 yard line. And they're working between the tackles a lot today because there's real estate to be acquired there. Ray Zellers, the fullback, carries on that play and gets about five yards, maybe six. When you look at Stanford in the nation defensively, they are they are young, they are inexperienced. Last year, uh, they had graduated seven defensive players. Six of them are in the NFL now. And uh, they're just young and inexperienced going against a tough, run-oriented offense. The tailback Kinder, straight ahead, trying for the first down. And he's close, but I do believe maybe a little short. Here's Jack Arut. Well, Keith, you were talking about running between the tackles. Well, if you think of one tackle, number 72, has a familiar name, Ryan Leahy. Well, that's right, because his father was an offensive reserve guard in 1968, Jim, and his grandfather played for Newt Rockney and was one of the great coaches at the University of Notre Dame. Who can ever forget Frank Leahy, who came back from the Navy in 45 through 53 and also coached him in 41 through 43. And we've got a third down and one right here. Kinder gets the first down by a yard. The Giants and the Dodgers are even in the game being played in Los Angeles. The Braves are leading Colorado four to one. 
the Braves and the Giants are tied for the National League West right now. Game tomorrow. And if there is a playoff game, it will be here in San Francisco in this area at Candlestick Park. That's Lake Dawson in motion. Hits the ball back to Kinder. Long Bryant got into the backfield on a blitz. But Kinder ran away from him and picked up a Notre Dame first down before Kevin Garnett can make the tackle. Stanford tried to send somebody. Is that Bryant or was that Watts, the linebacker? Uh, I don't know, either one of them. I couldn't tell. It looked like uh, 54 Watts, and he was uh, <laughs> one of the outside linebackers. Watts, a true freshman, and, and really didn't make an effort to come back on him. Uh, just points up the fact that he should have contained the play and not let him get outside. Ball is given to Beckton. And Beckton is taken down. Short of the line of scrimmage at the 40 yard line. That was number 72, Jason Fisk with the stop. Jason Fisk gets his name called for making the tackle at nose guard. He comes out of the ball game, sending Hebert back in. Fisk at 6'4, 280, a senior out of Davis. And you might wonder why and when, when, when Fisk makes a good play, do you take him out of the game? Well, it's because it's in a passing situation now. It's second and 13 or 14, and Hebert is a better pass rusher than Fisk is. Google on a straight drop. Green. Runners and a good play. An outstanding play. The ball comes loose and Stanford got it. Tyrone Parker covers it. I think it was Norwood that made the hit. Yeah. Norwood's going to read the screen all the way. I think it's man-to-man -man coverage and Norwood is just watching Zellers, he's got Zellers in coverage, and when you have, you cannot throw man screens against man coverage because the linebacker is going to be looking right at the man you want to throw the ball to. And so Stanford makes a break for themselves. First down at the Notre Dame 41-yard line. Stenstrom sets them up, stands up, gets some heat, throws underneath. Roberts taken down, short of the line of scrimmage. 36, Jeremy Semple makes the tackle. So Stenstrom stood up, looked quickly, went to the short man, and was nothing there for him. It'll be second down, 11. Notre Dame came into this game sixth in the nation in the turnover margin uh, category. They've taken it away 12 times, and now they've given it away six for a plus six on the year. That is very good. Stenstrom. Quick one, thrown hard to Tony Klein, the tight end. Klein makes it good at the 35. It'll be third down at about four. Make it the 34-yard line. Third down and three. Oregon out over California, 30th to nothing. Wow. Yeah, Rich Brooks. That's a pretty good little football team, looks like. They went back on the road to Champaign, Illinois, and beat the car out of Illinois, too, didn't yes, they? they did. Three and a half minutes to go in the first half. Stanford trying to generate a threat. 34-yard line for the Stanford Cardinal now. Third down and three. Mike Mitchell and Ethan Allen lined up in the backfield for the Cardinal. Do they run him? Yes, they do. Pitch it back to Mitchell. Straight ahead, and he's got his first down. 29-yard line in its sixth season. The Honda Scholar Athlete Award brought to you by American Honda, who is proud to support amateur athletics. This week's award goes to Justin Armour, the junior wide receiver from Stanford. Honorable mention, academic all-pack 10 team, 3.35 GPA. Honda presenting a check for $3,000 to the General Scholarship Fund of Stanford University. Armour, four catches and 51 yards today. And Ellery Roberts checks into the backfield. Stenstrom puts it to Kelly, takes it out, throws to Ethan Allen, and Allen drops the ball. Incomplete pass. Here's Jack. Keith, you might think when a kid like Zeller fumbles a football, you might end up in Coach Lou Holtz's doghouse. Not the case. 
Zeller sitting stoically on the sideline. Blue Holtz not once but twice came up to him and simply said, get it out of your mind. It's only one mistake. And that is correct. Zellers is a big part of that uh, rushing uh, offense for Holtz and the Irish. 14 to 3, the Irish lead. Stanford second down and 10 at the Notre Dame 29-yard line. Up the middle goes Allen. And Ethan is down at the 24. Talking about Zellers, Keith, and fumbles. Uh, if you're a running back, you're going to fumble the ball some. If you're a quarterback, you are going to throw some interceptions, and, and you're going to have to live with that. And, and you don't want to dwell on it. Uh, you just don't want to do it too often. But they are going to come at times, and when they do come, you just have to say that's part of the game and move on. They're down a long three now for Stanford. They haven't thrown the ball to Armour sometimes. Now they hide it at tight end. In a hurry. Looking for him. There he is. He's got the first down at the 15-yard line in front of Jeff Burris. So they hit Armour at tight end, and he worked around and worked in the middle and got loose, and we've got a Notre Dame man hurt. Look, let's go back and get this play. Look at these three receivers over here lined up. They're in a scatter formation. The man you want to watch and the man that's going to get the ball is right here. Armour is going to go down and break to the inside, and he is the main man they want to get the ball to. Everybody else is just camouflage, and you see three Notre Dame guys around him. Stenstrom with a good throw to get it in there. The man hurt on the play is John Covington walking off the field, as you see. Looks like he might be all right. Looks to be all right. That's good news. Brian McGee, number 17, a sophomore out of Largo, Florida, replaces him. Sean Wooden, a nickelback, comes off the field for the Irish. Stenstrom's got a first down. He's going to throw from the 16-yard line. Now he's going to run. And he gets out of bounds at the 13. Stenstrom has been outstanding this year, Keith, especially the last three games. He has uh, completed 71% of his passes for over 1,000 yards and 12 touchdowns and only three interceptions. If there is a downside to Steve Stenstrom is that he doesn't move well and doesn't scramble real well. That time, he showed uh, what he could do and picked up a big uh, first down. 14 out of 19 for 127 yards that's, on the day. That's quite a first down. Oliver Gibson checks back in to hunker down in the middle of the defensive front for the Irish. Stanford threatening here on second down and eight. Stenstrom out of hurry. Got it from the backside. There were three that got there. That's why we were talking about Seth Dippman uh, early on in the ball game. The weak side tackle has got to protect the quarterback's back. That well, was a screen, Keith. And the screen, the man they wanted to screen to didn't get out. I think Kenan Tatum was the first man to get to Stenstrom. So you got time called at 1.33 to go in the first half, and we go visit with John. Keith, Pac-10 score, Arizona State and Oregon State. Don Shanklin, the quarterback on the option, keeps it and takes it to the end zone. 31 yards on the touchdown. Right now, 12-0 is the score. Meanwhile, battle of undefeateds in the Pac-10. And Oregon surprising California right now, 30-7. They have not reached halftime yet. Keith, back to you. Here, John. Let's go back to that last play. They wanted to screen to the back coming this way. Watch defensively. This end right here is going to come up and sit in his pocket. But the reason he gets sacked is the strong safety blitzes on the play. That's Tatum, the nickelback. The screen to the right, he wants to throw it to the back. See the man on the bottom comes out and covers him, and in the time while he's waiting, then the strong safety or the nickelback gets the sack. That one goes to Rick Minner, the defensive coordinator for the Irish. And it's third and 19 for the Cardinal. Here's Jack. Well, good news for John Covington, Keith. He will be out for several plays because he hyperextended his elbow. They are going to ice it down. They don't seem too concerned. They think he should be able to play at least in the second half. All right. 
I see Lake Dawson running around down there, keeping a little leg loose or ankle loose, whatever it was that caused him to come off. So he's apparently going to be all right as well. It is third down and about 20. Stenson throws to Roberts. Somebody missed the block upfield, though, and that uh, pretty well sealed Roberts' fate. He got down to back to the original line of scrimmage at 13, and uh, he was taken down. So with fourth down, that'll bring in the kicking team, and it'll be Eric Abrams trying the field goal. He has one of 23 yards. Fourth down, Keith, a little screen pass. The attitude there for uh, Stanford and Bill Walsh. We just want to get. We just want to make sure that we get in field goal position. If they, if there's something there on a fake that he's seen, this would be a good time to do it. 34-yard try. He hooked it a bit, and he got it through there. And it's 14 to six at 47 seconds to go in the half. All right, 47 seconds to play in the first half, 14 to 6 ball game. Didn't get away. Notre Dame uh, with relative ease in the first two possessions. Four touchdowns. But since that time, uh, the Cardinal defensive people have turned scrappier. And I think that is why, Keith, that Walls played it rather conservative on that last call. He would say, all right, I don't want a turnover going in at halftime, only down 14 to 6 against a very good Notre Dame defense. He'll take that at this point. Special teams uh, jumps up again. Every time you see uh, Clint Johnson back or Mike Miller back, you have to think about that because uh, they really work on it. That's the goal line. Got a set up over here. Oh, they got a ticket. Johnson. All the way to the Stanford 20. the ball but watch to the left side watch to the left side right now look at the white jerseys and no red jerseys outside now let's go ahead and run it there are no red jerseys out there they suckered them they suckered stanford in over to the right side they got the white jerseys over there 79 yards on the return in 34 seconds to do something with it they got two timeouts the ball is on the stanford 21 yard line and mcdougall rolls it out here goes out of bounds inside the 10-yard line. First and goal, Notre Dame, Vaughn Bryant knocked him out of bounds. So the Irish rolling here off the big return by Johnson. That's the halftime, credential halftime report for you. And some conversation about the violence in college football. We saw a lot of it last weekend in a lot of different places. Kinder and Zellers are the running back now for the Irish. 28 seconds to play in the first half. No Notre Dame wide receiver has caught a touchdown pass this year. McDougal. There's one. Derek Mays. Special teams. Special teams. The extra point try by Kevin Pendergast. Five yards, 24 seconds to go in the first half. Trying to make it a 21 to six ball game. Good. Extra point. 
extra point. Very often have meaning down the way. I don't think Lou's worried about that. I think he knows there's more where that came from. Right, right in front of us. Number four is Vaughn Bryant. Mays is number one. Just gonna be a little slant. Starting to the outside. Excellent look. Little slant. Good catch. Yes, good catch. And the man. The first wide receiver touchdown pass of the year. See if he gets in before his knee hits the ground. No, nope. no. Nope. That ball should have been on the, about the one foot line, but something tells me they probably would have gotten in anyway. <laughs> Oh, the a, Irish off that uh, Clint Johnson return comes forming back. That's a killer, Keith. Nope. You remember the Notre Dame-Michigan game just before halftime? Yep. Holds the special teams, and we showed you that graphic earlier. Mike Miller ran that punt back for a touchdown against yep. Michigan just before halftime. There's Clint. Clint Johnson. They do have some speed at wide receiver at Notre Dame, and they, they let them run back the kicks. Well coached. <laughs> Keep it down on the ground. Don't give anybody a chance to run away with it. Mitchell over there. Wants to have it. Does get it. And returns it across the 45 to the 46. And here's Jack. Well, Keith, that run by Derek Mays brings back the memories for Derek. He said in the press kit his most memorable moment in his life believe it or not, was back in the third grade when he competed in his first track and field day. I asked him why, and he said, well, quite simply, it was the first athletic event that my father ever, come to, ever came to attend. But today, that run may overshadow that track and field day back in third grade. I hope so. Stanford apparently checking off and changing. Ethan Allen moved in the backfield, and that'll cost him five yards, so... The concentration breaks down for the Cardinals with 18 seconds to go in the first half of play. I'll tell you what, boys and girls, this Notre Dame bunch, they got Pittsburgh at home next week, then they go to BYU, that's no bargain, playing at Pro Bowl. Then they got Southern California at home, and then they have Navy. Then... Two big ones to finish. Florida State, Boston College, both in South Bend. Stenson throws, Armour catches. First down, 40-yard line of Notre Dame. Stop your clock for 12 seconds to go. Move the chains when the Cardinals come up to the line of scrimmage. They've got a timeout remaining. And they'll spend it right here. Nice little change up. Not much time before half. You put your three receivers over here. Everybody thinks, all right, you're going to go downfield and throw it up for grabs. But you put one man over here and run a slant uh, against the single coverage over there when, when, when they only move one man over there defensively. The only problem is you need somebody out there with about 4-3 speed that Armour doesn't have, and you might break it all the way. Walsh was telling us yesterday, a lot of these completions that they're making, they're just catching them and falling down because they don't have that type of speed to go all the, all the way or, or run with the ball after they catch it. He works a pretty good table at his mama's cafe in Colorado. Came to Stanford as a quarterback and had an opportunity to move to wide receiver. He's just the All-American kid. I, 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 he's done everything. He's a good kid. He's a good kid. He's a big kid. He was an actor in school, too. <laughs> he was a... Passable. Sang, like in, sang in the musical and the whole work, huh? Passable. <laughs> 12 seconds to go. Stanford just spent its last time out. The ball is on the Irish 40-yard line. Notre Dame leading 20 to 6. And let's see what... Stanford's got in mind here. A little quick release out here to Shaw. Shaw on the sideline. Kip toes his way down to the 31. Trying to get out. Taylor knocks him out of bounds. Trying to get some yardage. Get, get down in field goal range. It'll be a 48-yard field goal at this point. This has got to be a, a quick play because only seven seconds remain in the first half. So they'll try something quick to the sidelines, probably. 
Oliver Gibson comes out of that defensive alignment. Puts Notre Dame into a nickel with three down. There's the pass. This one to the sideline. Shaw again. And, uh, they give him the out-of-bounds call. He's at the 27-yard line. And here comes Eric Abrams with three seconds remaining in the first half. Abrams has hit from 23. He has hit from 34. This will test his length. His long has been 42. This is 45. It is partially blocked, dies in the end zone, the half is over, and at halftime, Notre Dame 20, Stanford 6. And here's John. nine yard return that set up that 20th point for Notre Dame and that's where we are at 20 to 6 the Irish leading by 14 as we begin the second half of play here at the farm they call it Stanford that ball is kicked way back into the end zone Johnson has no return on this one well, we talked about early on the story of this game and for Notre Dame they wanted to control the ball to keep it away from Stanford's offense. They have really not done that. They have only had the ball 11 minutes and 46 seconds, but that big uh, kickoff return just before halftime was big in their favor. And uh, offensively, Stanford needed a big day. They're about on schedule to get about the yardage that they normally get, uh, 400 yards per game. Kinder is the deep back. Zeller's in front of him. McDougal, the quarterback, gives to Kinder. They face him outside, but he has great speed. He has good size, but Stanford played that one very well with Toby Norwood leading the defensive play. Notre Dame has scored late first-half touchdowns in three of their victories against Michigan with six seconds to play in the half, Michigan State with 10 seconds, and now against Stanford with 24 seconds to play. So, well, that's, that's really a, a punch in the, uh, the solar plexus going to the clubhouse. Zellers carries two yards to the 22. Coy Gibbs on the hit. As a took look at the first half statistics, the, again, the bottom time of possession, big in favor of Stanford. Turnovers, Notre Dame had the one, and Stanford got three points out of it. Number of plays, big in favor of Stanford, up by 11. Third down and eight for the Irish. Flip. McDougal passes away, however, and good to Mays. Derek Mays, who caught the touchdown pass, the first wide receiver to do it this season, and he picks up the first down. Ryan Leahy, number 72, the right guard for the Irish, is down and in pain. He would be a severe loss. Big guy from Yakima, Washington. <laughs> College football on ABC Sports, brought to you by Pontiac, and your local Pontiac dealer. We are driving excitement. And by Speed Stick Deodorant and Speed Stick Antiperspirant, the number one for movers and shakers. Time remains out for Ryan Leahy. The ball is up near the 35-yard line, where it is the first down for Notre Dame, as they lead 20-6. Here's a look at the no, uh, Notre Dame first half leaders. McDougal, the quarterback, four of six and a touchdown. Kinder leads the rushers with 70 yards and three, re three wide receivers with one reception. Mays with the touchdown. 
And the first half possessions for Notre Dame, they've had it five times, and they've scored three touchdowns on their first, second, and last possession. They had the one punt, and the fumble led to three points for Stanford. Time is still out for the injured Ryan Leahy, and it's either knee or ankle, but he is getting some assistance off the field. And you hate to see this, too, Keith, because it seems as though he is in some real pain. No football team has enough people to be impervious to the kind of injuries that we're seeing accumulate now. Leahy is gone, or at least for the time being. Bursich is out with injury. Uh, Grasmanis is still uh, laid up. Adrian Gerald has just come back. Paulus is gone with a broken collarbone, the freshman quarterback. Anthony Peterson has not been able to come back as yet either. So if you keep it up, the attrition will eventually just wear you down and you become very thin. Lake Dawson now goes in motion for Notre Dame. Ball is handed off to the tailback. That is Randy Kinder, the 205-pounder from East Lansing, and he's up to the 40. That's a pickup of about five yards, a little more. You know, Keith, as much as you hate to see somebody injured and go off the field under somebody's uh, help, still and all, they do come back. I mean, yep. we only show the shots of him being hauled off, and he doesn't come back today. And if, uh, if the worst is concerned and he does need some, some repair on an ankle or knee, 99 and most of them all come back and play again. So there'll be other days for Frank Leahy. No, no, Ryan Leahy. I mean Ryan Leahy, <laughs> not, not Frank. <laughs> Frank. Frank's son. <laughs> Frank was probably, Frank is probably looking down, the, praying for it. Yeah. Uh, that was Lee Beckton carrying there. He's short of the first down by about two yards. Will Lyle, a sophomore from Brandon, Mississippi, comes in to replace him. Number 71, Hebert is out of there now, and Fisk comes back. They're looking run on third down and two. And they do run it with Beckton. And he's going to have the first down. He, he's a leaner. He's going north and south, and he's got his first down. Not uh, usual that you see a nose tackle uh, substituted for special situations. Well, Fisk, number 72, right over the center, the nose tackle, is in there to stop the run. He is their run nose tackle. And Hebert, number 71 we've seen coming in out, comes in in passing situations. But Notre Dame, for the most part, is running the football. Yeah, he ran right by Fisk. Mason just didn't quite get a hold of him. This is Willie Clark. This time, Stanford jumps him. Norwood again defensively leading the surge, the yeah. senior out of Columbus, Georgia. Second half, the, uh, the, the uh, is, is more blitzing. Number 52, uh, Norwood, Fred Von Oppen, defensive coordinator, says, we've got to be more aggressive. We're coming out. Different defensive game plan now. We're going to blitz. We're going to get into the backfield, and we're going to throw them for some negative losses. This may, now when Holtz finds this out and realizes it, what you're doing is creating single coverage in the secondary. You may see some big plays for Notre Dame in the passing game. But you got to gamble. They don't have a choice, do they? Right. This is Willie Clark getting around the corner and turning to midfield. And taken down there. Number 35, Garnett. That's the man that bellied up to him. So for a fleeting moment, it looked like Willie might be off to the races. But they get him after a four-yard pickup, make it third down and six. And let's find out about Ryan Leahy from Jack. Well, Keith, it's really not very good news. Ryan Leahy, according to the positions for Notre Dame, is suffering from a torn ligament in his right knee. Oh, He's dear. out for the day, maybe for a couple of weeks. That's too bad. It'll be more than a couple of weeks yeah. if it's a torn ligament. Uh, He's just a junior, though. He has another year of eligibility for the Irish. McDougal on third down. Let's it go. Dawson's out there. He's loose. And he's got a first down at the Stanford 25-yard line. He got away from Brennan Davis, who got his first start at cornerback today, and he just juked him and got away from him for a 24-yard pickup. Exactly. They're, uh, Dawson is an outstanding receiver. He has not caught a lot of balls. He came in uh, with five on the year. He's caught 60 over his career, but they say he is an outstanding talent and will uh, will be drafted very highly in the NFL. He gets picked for the right team. You hear a lot about oh, him. Oh, yeah. Willie Clark. 
That's four tackles. Two Stanford men had their hands on him, and he just kept right on pounding and got away from them. Toby Norwood was one of those, couldn't get a handle on him, and Nick Watts was the other. Exactly, and the problem with Stanford and their tackling, their linebackers are not that big. They're 205, 210, 215, and 215, and their safeties are not much bigger than that. So these are not big men, not 230, 235 linebackers. They weigh in the 210, 215 range. Fullback Zeller. It was second down. And four. Ball is just inside the 20. Call at the 19-yard line. Nine and a half minutes to go in the third quarter. Notre Dame 20 to six over Stanford and threatening again. Third down. And three. McDougal up. Big hole. Six out of eight, 99 yards in passing. A touchdown pass, and now two touchdowns and running. All right, Holt says you're going to be more aggressive or run the option. I'll get my man, my tackle right through here and block this man, and I'm going to option off of the end right here, and as he comes down, he's just going to go up inside and get the touchdown. You're going to play man coverage on me. I'm going to run the option, and your safety, Garnett, is going to have to make the play, and he did not make it. And Pendergast kicks the point. And at 9.13 to go in the third quarter, it's the 27 to 6, Notre Dame. What? 27 to 6 ball game, 9.13 to go in the third quarter. And the crowd of more than 86,000 is a little passive right now, I dare say. Resting and waiting in the bright sunshine for the kickoff, Mike Mitchell and Greg Camella. It's Mitchell at about the 13. And up to the 30 where he's taken down, and there they will go to work. And I want a moment to visit with a young lady who's got herself in a fine kettle of fish. Condi Wright, the Phobos Vice President, Stanford University, is a Notre Dame graduate. Now, how in the world are you going to get home safely tonight? Well, I've, uh, I'm definitely a Notre Dame grad, and I love watching this great Lou Holtz team. But uh, I taught Steve Senstrom and Aaron Mills and some of these Stanford kids, and so it's a little like watching your own children play. Of course, you've been following this game for a long time. It's one, it's one you hold close to your heart. Yes, it certainly is. Uh, ever since I was about four, my father was a football coach and uh, yeah. taught me everything about this sport, so I'm a real fan. Let me, amongst millions of us, offer you congratulations for what you've done with your life. It's wonderful. Thank you very much. Uh, I've had a nice combination of uh, luck, good fortune, and blessing, and uh, we're trying to do some good things here at Stanford. President Casper and I uh, constitute a new administration. It's a really exciting time. Great. Nice to see you. Nice to see you, Keith. Thank Take you. Care. Bye, Condi. Quite a young woman. Second down and 12 now for the Cardinal. As Sinstrom back, throws, has a man, too long, intended for David Shaw, and it's just over his hand. So Shaw, who's not seen the ball a great deal, defended by Lane, had a half a step, but the ball was a bit too long. Again, another long drive, 80, 81 yards in 12 plays, eight up five minutes and 47 seconds, and... Uh, Notre Dame and Holtz, who calls the plays, figured out that they were doing some man coverage, some blitzing, and the option is very good against the man-to-man, uh, -man, and just ran it in McDougal. Ran it in. Vincent throwing again. Down the pipe it goes to Tony Klein, the tight end, and that's the Cardinal first down at the Irish 49-yard line. One of the things the Stanford defense has not been able to do, Bob Gracie, is deny. And... Uh, whereas uh, Stanford has been denied on critical down. Well, you know, defenses win football games, right. and Stanford cannot stop 
uh, Notre Dame. We said that coming in. They were uh, one of the worst defenses uh, statistically in the country. Notre Dame has the 11th best defense in the country, and they are denying the Stanford offensively. Eight minutes to go in the third quarter. First down for the Cardinal. Here is Armour, former quarterback, throwing intended for Shaw. He had double coverage. They didn't fool anybody. They had one man going deep, and there were two defenders all over Shaw, Burris and Lane. And we opened up the telecast saying we've got two of the best game day coaches uh, in college football, and uh, they're pulling out all the tricks. And that was one of the gimmicks that Wallace has uh, tied in reverse with Armour, the ex-quarterback. But as you said, well covered. <laughs> <laughs> Mike Mitchell now, the freshman tailback, is in the backfield. Has the ball going outside. He lays a little lick on uh, the Notre Dame defender over there, Bobby Taylor. Bobby Taylor is having an MVP day. He is. He has been very effective in, in helping control Justin Armour. Bobby Taylor also blocked that uh, field goal attempt right. right at the end of the half. Yep. Alabama, South Carolina. That's over at South Carolina tonight. USC Arizona will be seen out here in the West only the Pacific States Nevada and Arizona and that's a big ball game That'd be in interesting. the shape of the Rose Bowl yeah, yeah, yep. it's very interesting this is Mitchell does he have the speed yes he does he gets around the corner he gets the first down for Stanford at the 37 yard line in case you're wondering about uh, Taylor's uh, numbers, we were talking about him having such a good day. Bobby has five tackles and a blocked field goal. And a whole lot of other good stuff in the neighborhood of Justin Armour. Taylor started seven games last year as a freshman. He's only a sophomore this year. Back goes Stenstrom. Let's it go down the middle. Pass is caught. Well, you can't keep him quiet all day. That's Armour. And he made the catch brought down by Justin Goheen, the middle linebacker. Mark Harris, 82, was in there running down the sidelines on a fly. Armour has caught seven balls for 90 yards. Tatum, 39, just jamming him. Now it's his own coverage. The linebackers are just dropping straight back in between. Armour finds in between, and then Goheen sees the ball and goes and makes the tackle. Brian Manning has been very quiet. He's in the ball game right now. Stenstrom gets some heat, gets the pass away. The pass is caught by Ellery Robertson. He'll pick up three yards. And let's check in and find out what the Beavers are doing, John. All right, Keith facing Arizona State. Grady Benton here goes 11 yards to Parnell Charles. 27 to seven was the score at that point. Beavers with the lead. Right now at halftime, the Beavers lead it 27 to 14. We'll keep you updated. Keith, back to you. I would be surprised if they can keep the Sun Devils down all day. Stenstrom now 21 out of 27, 202 yards. Roberts and Allen in the backfield. Give it to Roberts. Dives for the marker. A half a yard short. Brian McGee rode him out of bounds. Seven minutes and six seconds to play in the third quarter. Notre Dame defensively has bent some today. I mean, they have not given up a, a big play or a big touchdown. They've played the, the gimmicks very well that Stanford has thrown at them. They've given up some yardage, but they have not given up a touchdown. Stanford. Only 38 yards rushing coming in uh, in the ball game, and they're only, only averaging 62 coming in. Roberts for the first down. Ball will be spotted at the 14-yard line. Justin Goheen made the hit on him, a junior out of Wexford, PA. And now they're saying... Yep, that's good. It is a first down. I thought for a minute they were going to say, wait, my goodness. You only need a half a yard. Inside seven minutes to go. Time will soon become a factor in this ball game. Stanford can hit you quickly, but so far Notre Dame has not given them the big play. And I don't think they will. Ethan Allen and Ellery Roberts in the backfield. 
Denstrom looking around, throws it to Allen out of the backfield, and he is out of bounds at the eight-yard line. So that's a pickup of six, and it'll be second down. Armour was taken out of the game, which sort of surprised me. He's well, he, on the sideline. He may, uh, well, he's back now. Yeah, yeah, he's back now. Sometimes they go out because they get nicked a little bit. When you have your whole defense set up against somebody, you take them out, they don't know what to do sometimes. Here's Ellery Roberts around the corner. First and goal, Stanford of the Irish one. Jeff Burris kept him out of the end zone. Well, this is a bit of a gritty drive here. Roberts is having a great day. This drive started on the 30-yard line. Roberts is in his sixth year in college football. He had an injury one year and a medical red shirt another year. This is the 13th play of this possession. Nathan Olson is in the block. Roberts straight ahead. Touchdown. is only the third rushing touchdown for Stanford this year and only the fourth time that Notre Dame has giving up given up a rushing touchdown the extra point try by Eric Abrams out of the hold of Chris Berg and Parker Bailey does the snapping boy he zipped that thing back there didn't he six and a half minutes to go in the third quarter at the 27-13 ball game Aaron Mills, kick. Johnson burned him at the close of the first half. Mills again gets all of this one knocked it well. My goodness, he's five, six yards deep in the end zone and coming out, and he's got a wall, and he's on his way. He is on cruise control. Goodbye. There are no flags. That's about 106 yards. now have been returned for touchdown. He does, he does it. He does it, Vince the beat. There you go, Lou. All right. Let's get that smile out there. He is involved in every facet of coaching. The offense, the defense, and the special teams. And, a, and especially if something's not going well, he'll get more involved in that. <laughs> well, it's just amazing to me that, you know, he, he emphasizes special teams. There are certain coaches that really work on it. Yeah. And boy, it pays off. It helps to have the talent that you can plug in to get that done. Normally, when you when the ball is that deep in the end zone, you don't run it out. That's right. What is it? It was startling that he would bring it out. This is the same return, left return, as far as the offense is concerned. And all of his white shirts are over there blocking. Glenn Johnson, you're not going to catch him now. No. No chance. That was a killer for Stanford. Anyone can see that the new GE Profile Radiant Convection Range is easy to clean. But the real technological advantage is what you can't see. So we'll show it to you in a roundabout way. Introducing the first GE range that circulates hot air all around your food. Roasting meats up to 30% faster. So they get done to a turn on the outside while staying tender and juicy on the inside. Why does GE offer such an ingenious way to cook? Because we know how much of life revolves around dinner. <laughs> And have a ball. New Pontiac Transport Shot. The roominess and convenience of flexible seating, the safety of standard anti lock brakes and airbags. Two, count them, two built in child seats. 
and a great new look. New Pontiac Transport, it's got it all. You know, if life were perfect, women wouldn't talk during the bottom of the night. Yeah, and magazines would never smell like perfume. No, 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 no. See, if, if life were perfect, potato chips would cure hair loss. Dogs would walk themselves. And algebra. It would actually come in handy. Well, hey, at least there's Amstel Light. It's only 95 calories. Yeah, but it still has that real imported taste. Nothing's missing. Amstel Light is a great beer. Look, if life were perfect, if you'd buy the next round. All right, all right, I'm buying. You got a camera? What's up, Mom? I love you. I was for you. What's up, everybody? Notre Dame will kick it off. Stanford just had their heart broken. They had ground, grinding away and pounding away, and they'd gotten themselves back in a contentious position at 24-13, and Johnson took the ball 106 yards. That is a very short kick up to the 19-yard line for Camilla, and he gets it up to about the 33. Go back to the touchdown. When you're covering the kick, you got to find out where the receiving team is going. Look here. Look at all of the white shirts. Look at all the white shirts. There is only one white shirt on this half of the football field. Now watch as they all run over there. They'll all run over this way. Let's go ahead and start it and watch the white jerseys all go over to the left side. Now, right here. Look at, look at all these white. And there is going to be a huge hole right in here for Johnson dig it up through he had one kickoff return coming to this game of 53 yards he's had one of 79 today and that one went 106 he only gets 100 yards credit for it. Mitchell and Cabela now line up at the backfield as Stinson comes back to throw it throws underneath to Cabela out of the backfield for three yards on the play that's number 34 great Cabela on the pass reception for Steve Stinson a team can absorb only so many shots like that before they're going to surrender. <laughs> we still have a lot of time, six minutes remaining in the third quarter, but it'll take a considerable miracle now, I would say, for Stanford to, to get back in the hunt. But we'll see. This is college football. And the most unpredictable thing in the world is a 19-year-old, right? That's for sure. They're down 21 points, and there is time on the board. is good. Pass is caught by number 82, Mark Harris. And Harris gets the ball to the Irish side of the field. Mark is a 190-pound junior from Brigham City, Utah. There's a look at Clint Johnson. Just on kickoff return today, 179 yards. He came into the game with only four receptions. He is a senior, and it's the special team that have really turned this game in Notre Dame's favor. Set up two touchdowns. Stenstrom. Oh, good catch. That's an outstanding catch and a fine pass by Stenstrom to Brian Manning. That is his first reception of the day. He's only 5'11", 170-pound freshman out of Kansas City. But watch him go up for this ball. Well, this is the only speed at wide receiver. And he is a freshman. Hasn't played a whole lot. Doesn't run a real good route. Great leaping ability. He caught five passes last week and a touchdown for a touchdown uh, against UCLA. So Walsh working him in, working the young guys in. And even if they don't win this game, it'll be a some playing time for the younger guys, Keith. Here's Mitchell. Takes a pretty good shot to the chops at the 30-yard line. Five minutes to go in the third quarter. 34-13, Stanford trying to answer the long touchdown run by Clint Johnson. Slow to come off the ball here for a moment. Let's say howdy to an old friend of ours, a man with a million friends in this country, Billy Edwards, had surgery, brain surgery. This past week, he's hospitalized. He's doing fine. And we wish him well. We want him to know we love him. Get well, Billy. Second down and eight from the 30. Allen and Mitchell in the backfield. And now Stenstrom spends the timeout. Clock stops at 4.26 to play in the third quarter. Still Walsh 
have made the comment, Bob, earlier this year that after five weeks, that he must have said it facetious. Couldn't have been two. He said after five weeks, we will know where we are. Well, he's played Washington, San Jose, Colorado, UCLA, and now Notre Dame. He's lucky to be alive after those five weeks. <laughs> it was back in 1925 that Notre Dame and Stanford first got acquainted. They met in the Rose Bowl. The Irish led for the Four Horsemen, Stanford by the great Ernie Nevers. It was Canute Brockstein. It was Pop Warner. The Irish won the ball game 27 to 10, and it was the last bowl game for Notre Dame for the next 25 years. But then, bowl games became profitable. Almost necessary in the operation of collegiate athletics. Denson going back down the middle. Manning is there. Touchdown. Wide open. Sanford answers. And just when everybody thought the Fiddler has put his bow away for the night, here they come storming back. Stanford has been used to these shootouts. They have been in a few this year. Extra point try by Abrams is good. And so this crowd of more than 86,000 takes renewed interest. It's again a 14-point ball game with 420 to play in the third quarter. And now there is no smile on the Notre Dame side right now. From behind the defense. A little blitz, the two linebackers coming at man coverage in the secondary. Denson reads it nicely. He had could have gone to armor right there, but he goes deep to the man that has the speed in case they have a blitz in man coverage. You read deep to short. And he read the linebackers blitzing. He read his deep man. He says there's nobody in the center of the field. He's beaten the corner. Let's throw it down there. Nice read and a nice catch. Here's Jack. Well, Keith, when we watched Abrams put it up through the uprights, you know, you would think that he was probably spending a lot of time through over the net practicing kicking. He never does. In fact, he never goes near the net. He says the only thing that's necessary to put the ball through the uprights is your mind. He visualizes throughout the game. In fact, he just stands on the sidelines and watches. A different approach, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> well, the last two kickoffs, the ones that have been returned anyway, Gone a long way. <laughs> <laughs> that ball is rolling around. Stanford dives for it. They may have it. They had a shot at it. Nope. Irish got it. This half, Notre Dame possession, touchdown. Stanford possession, touchdown. Notre Dame answers, touchdown. Stanford touchdown. You have had four touchdowns for it. Melvin Dansby comes up with that kick. So you've got to take a risk now and then. The Irish will go with good field position at their own 38 yard line. 34 to 20 now is the score. Kinder is the deep back. And it looks like Kevin McDougal is changing his play. Crowd is not a factor at this stadium. Ball is given to Kinder. Kinder is motoring. And he is all the way down to the Stanford 35 yard line. Brought down by number 23, Kinder. Kinder, the freshman, getting a lot of playing time. There's a block of the linebacker right there. The safety can't make the play. This is just uh, this is just put a hat on the guys. This is like you draw it up. If you're an offensive <laughs> coach, and I've got the chalk last, and I'm going to draw up these plays without the defensive coach getting the chalk. I mean, this is this is working too good. At Mark Edwards, and the whistle stops the play. Kinder has 13 carries in the ball game for 101 yards. Ball, ball, 
False start against somebody along the front line, so Notre Dame absorbs the five-yard penalty. And bad news for Stanford, Clint Johnson just came on the field. Every time he comes on the field, it looks like it tips in Notre Dame's favor. He has been something today. Well, California's making a ball game of it now as it's 38-27, Oregon. Kinder averaging, averaging nearly eight yards per rush. Willie Clark. Pretty good little pop there at about the 37-yard line. Willie, 5'10", 180, senior, Wheatland, California, five seconds right here for our ABC stations to identify themselves. This is WXYZ-TV, Channel 7, Detroit. 5 remaining third quarter. It is second down and 12 for Notre Dame. Dribble to throw. Hawk, sack, back at the 43. Todd wins their approval of the hometown defense. Nick Watt on the play, and here is John Thunder. Keith, just to let you know what went on. You're only young once, so do something impulsive. Grab a friend, get into a Jeep Wrangler, and have some fun. Lease the original ever for BC, BC rather, under the dome. Back to you. Big win for Tom Conklin falls up. 43-yard line where it is third down and 18 now. And the Irish spend the timeout. So they want to talk. Stanford getting their dander up. Staging a comeback. Looked like that Notre Dame might have roundhoused them, but they just got up off the floor and came right back. And next Saturday, ABC Sports has a big doubleheader at noon Eastern time, nine on the West Coast. We've got the number one Florida State Seminoles at old rival, the Miami Hurricanes. Miami ranked number three. And then after that, we have some more old classics for you, like Michigan, Michigan State, Oklahoma, and Texas, and the Pac-10 game. We'll try to choose the Pac-10 game that means the most. So check for the game on your ABC station and for games available on pay-per-view. All next Saturday on ABC Sports. To look at the rushing yards today for Notre Dame, we mentioned early on that their plan was to control the football and the best way that they can control it is by running it. McDougal, the quarterback, has 42 yards but two touchdowns, both on options. Of course, Kinder, the freshman, over 100 yards. He was looking that time for Johnson. Couldn't find him and got second. Third and 18. A lot of time and throws deep for Dawson. He got it at the 11. Lake Dawson got away from Vaughn Bryant and made the catch. First down, Irish. Well, he's going to roll away from where he throws to try to affect the defensive backs in the secondary. He rolls to his left to pull the safety with him. Now he throws all the way back across field to the right. And that does look like a good catch, like he hit inbound before he was out of bounds. McDougal has now hit seven out of nine and five in a row. Gives the ball to Lee Beckton, the tailback. And he'll have three yards down to about the eight-yard line. Keith, that was a big play in this hand. game. Uh, momentum was back with Stanford. It was third down. If they don't pick up that first down, not only was it a first down and can continue the drive, but it is a long completion that gets him down inside the 20-yard line where he looks like he's going to score again. Well, that's a great play by Dawson. Well, we just we talk about how good Dawson, but you know we don't get a chance to see that very often because he doesn't catch that many passes. Three for 62 today. McDougal keeps it. Now he flips it up. He is tackled and it's touchdown. Lee Beckton. The old Upton play. And McDougal gets up very tenderly. In fact, he's not even up yet. 
He took a pretty good lick. Now he's up. Well, this time they say it's the option, but the quarterback is not going to score. We're going to stop him this time. Doesn't look like anything there. May have just gotten himself stretched back a little bit, but he does flip the ball, and the back scores this time, not the quarterback. And if you're an offensive coach or an offensive fan, you love it. Five touchdowns in a row, five straight possessions. Paul Taylor is in the hold as McDougal leaves, and Pendergast will try the point. We've had three touchdowns scored on the option, two of them by McDougal, and now the one by Beckman. And the kick is good. 141 to go, third quarter. 41 20, Notre Dame. From now on, Superman is fair game. If you haven't seen Lois and Clark... But he's mine! Is he able to leap tall buildings in a single bound? This Sunday is your chance... There's no reason to hide. Especially from me. ...to get a real winner. Well, a powerful then a locomotive. A Superman for our time. Faster than a speeding bullet. The season's most entertaining new show. It's Superman. Lois and Clark. Ever since he held me in his arms, is there something between us? Sunday. We may be in three digits any time now, the way things are going. Here's another look at the touchdown. It's an option. Fake to the fullback, and the fullback goes and blocks. There's the first linebacker that hits him. Nick Watts hit him. The up, hit him up man. high. It doesn't look like it's a yep. leg problem, but yep. it's something shoulder or maybe got dinged a little bit. Aaron Taylor, however, the big offensive tackle, he was hobbling when uh, he came out of the game, too. So McDougal was dinged up, and so was Taylor on the extra point try. So uh, Taylor will crank up here in case he's needed in the next offensive series. Right now, the Irish will kick it off to Stanford. And the gas kick is high. Not too deep for Mitchell. That's the eight. To the 30, 31. And it's a first down there. Stenstrom, as he comes out for this series, 26 of 32, which ain't bad. <laughs> ain't bad. 271. Eight straight at 13 of his last 14. Well, that's Stenstrom. This is the last drive here for Notre Dame. 62 yards on only six plays. You gotta love it if you love offense. Touchdowns are cheap. Over on uh, in Berkeley, they're rolling up the points, too. In the Oregon uh, Cal game. First down, 32-yard line. Tried to deliver it. They call it incomplete forward pass. The referee, William Richardson, was right there. There's the Oregon Cal game, 38-27 in the third quarter. They got 65 points in that game. We got 61 in this. Uh huh. Second down and ten. That's, that's Frost in there. Yeah. Yeah, Scott Frost. He's got a package of about four or five plays that he'll run. 6-3-2-10, freshman Wooker. The screen, quarterback screen. Number five, new interesting little wrinkle. Yeah, Greg Lane, 33, came up to get a piece of him as he went by. Otherwise, he might have picked up a, a big gain on that play. Let's find about, uh, out about uh, McDougal from Jack. Well, Keith, the replay showed it clearly. He stretched himself way backwards, and according to the position for Notre Dame, it was just an extension of his back. They don't feel that it'll be a problem. They're going to keep him out for a few sets, and then they'll put him back in. Now, the right. update on Aaron Taylor as well, he has a sprained knee, but they think he'll be back as well. Okay. Stenstrom is back in there now as Scott Foss leaves. Deep drop by Stenstrom. Let's it go down the middle, and he just rolled it in there to uh, Justin Armour, but Armour couldn't come up with it. McGee is there. He was trying for the interception, and it's an incomplete forward pass. So 
they'll kick it on fourth down and nine. Well, let's applaud the uh, Notre Dame defense. Finally, a defense stops the other team. <laughs> yeah. First time in the half. What a long time. Notre Dame has 12 men out there, but uh, they get, get him off in time, I guess. Now we get a flag thrown by one of the linesmen. The ball is second by Mike Miller. Miller is decked back around the 15 yard line. We got another flag across the way. We had one on this near side, and I think that was the 12th man against the Irish. He didn't get the 12th man off the field in time. And another flag over across the way. It came later. 51 yard punt. Well, I haven't gotten a signal yet as to what we're going to get from the man in the white hat. Yeah, it's against Notre Dame. So while they sort it out, let's talk about tomorrow night on ABC. America's Funniest Home Videos, Raven Simone guesting on the new America's Funniest People. Followed the Lois and Clark New Adventures of Superman. Then the Sunday night movie, Kate Jackson and Lori Loughlin, Empty Cradle, tomorrow night on ABC. Raven Simone, I could watch her all night. I just I just enjoy watching that young gal. Pretty good. She's fun. Well, this complicated decision here. Well, they said that. Needs a new microphone, yes, doesn't it? Does. <laughs> Illegal block in the back on Notre Dame, so they'll just back them up 10 yards. That's, that's the bigger penalty. But that doesn't seem to bother Notre Dame. And they've started inside their 20 three times a day and have scored three touchdowns on long drives. The ball is put down at the seven-yard line where they will have it, and Fela comes in for this series at quarterback in relief of Kevin McDougal, who was stretched and uh, stretched his back enough that they want to sit him out and watch it. Aaron Taylor is also out of this series. Mike McGlynn replaces him at left tackle. McGlynn is number 70. Might be a pretty good time for Stanford to think flip with Taylor out of there. And they stuffed that play pretty well. Randy Kinder carrying, but over the left side where Taylor normally works and where uh, McGlynn came in uh, you can look at it two ways, either fresh legs or cold, and uh, they went right there, and Stanford stopped it. So look at Aaron Taylor. Second and nine. On the sideline, getting a little uh, ice on the knee. He probably won't be back today. Washington Huskies beating San Jose. John Ralston coming back to coaching. Ray Zellers is the single back now for Notre Dame, and here's Taylor rolling it out. And he got around the corner for some penalty flag is thrown as Jason Fisk, number 72, runs down Fela and makes the tackle. Penalties against Notre Dame. Fatigue starts to become a factor here when you get little penalties like pushing in the back and holding and things like that. It show up late in the ball game. We're coming to the end of the third quarter. Stretching his back is McDougal. Irish holding. So that's this is first, uh, the really the first time today that uh, Notre Dame has done anything really to hurt themselves. Mm -hmm. They haven't done much else to hurt themselves. Penalty occurred at the four yard line, so you get half the distance putting the ball back on the two. Penalty effected from the spot of the foul. Kind of fun to see a crowd this big watching football at Stanford, isn't it? Uh huh. 86,000 plus. Time called, and it's going to be charged, I think, to Notre Dame. With 14 seconds remaining in the third quarter. They will. The Notre Dame schedule uh, looking down the road for them now because if they win today, they're 5 0. Oh, and uh, four Big Ten teams there, they yep. swept through the Big Ten. Yep. And uh, 
the rest of the schedule uh, until you get down into November, frankly, is not all that demanding, I don't think. BYU could be a bump in the road oh, at Provo. I mean, the Levelle Edwards team, the way they pass the ball, they're yep. always a bump in the road. But uh, looking down at the last two games of the season, that's uh, there's some, some concern there. The Stanford schedule, the first five weeks, just absolutely brutal. I mean, you say San Jose, well, look at it. They were at the neighborhood rivalry. Yeah, they were at Washington. Yeah. Uh, and they could have they could have lost any one of the all four of those games. They had to come from behind to win at San Jose State and with Colorado. And look at the rest of them. Yep. They have the third toughest schedule, uh, says the NCAA, uh, of anybody in college football. And Notre Dame on the road. They've won the last 10 straight and 29 of the last 33 games. Taylor hands the ball off to Zellers. And Zellers running hard. Bangs his way all the way out to the nine, and the third quarter is over. We'll be back after this message and the word from our ABC station. Oh, that SSDI is terrific. Yeah. Supercharged, traction control, ABS, dual airbags, leather. What a car. I told you. And you were right. It's thousands less than a BMW or the Lexus. Well. I'm picking it up tomorrow. I owe you one pound. Okay. Tony and Diane get regular insurance checkups, just like they get regular medical checkups. I'm State Farm Agent Carlos Bermudez. I have been their State Farm Agent for seven years. A family insurance checkup helps them make sure all their coverages are up to date. It's also a good time to explore options, like how their life insurance plan can be adapted to help with their daughter's college education. I think the family insurance checkup is something everybody can feel good about. State Farm is there. What if your baby disappeared? That's impossible. And no one believed you. Lori Loughlin, Kate Jackson, inspired by a true story, Empty Cradle Someday. A married tag offers two ways to call from anywhere to anywhere. Goodbye. At any time. Ameritech calling card and complete MasterCard. The cards you can always call on. Ameritech, your link to a better life. You're only young once, so do something impulsive. Grab a friend, get into a Jeep Wrangler, and have some fun. Lease the original top-down off-road machine with zero down and just $192 a month. And the legend can be yours. It's a limited time offer, so hurry. You're only young once. Live a little. It's the least we can do for you at your Jeep and Eagle dealer. An ugly brawl erupts after a local high school football game. We'll tell you what happened after the game. Here we go with the fourth quarter. A ball game where they've gone up and down the field. Notre Dame is backed up right now at their own nine-yard line. It is third down and eight. Lee Beckton is in the backfield. Lee Beckton is loose and is very close to a first down. They'll move the chains, I think, on that run. So once again, Beckton comes up with a tough run when they need it. Here are the numbers through three quarters. Uh, the big number there, rushing yards for Notre Dame, 233 in three quarters. The other thing that that doesn't show, the time of possession in Stanford's favor doesn't show, is the two touchdowns off special teams. That's the kickoff return yardage for Notre Dame. That number is pretty easy, but kickoff return yardage for Notre Dame, 179 yards on kickoff return, and they both were for touchdowns. Let's touchdowns. This is Willie Clark on a sweep. And the Cardinal get him just to bounce the line of scrimmage. 
Dr. Gerhard Casper coming by to visit. The president of Stanford. Oh, it's, it's quite a festive day to have 80, more than 80,000 people in the old ballpark. Tennessee jumping on Duke today pretty well, too. The volunteers, I'll tell you, they're, they're going to... They're going to beat a lot of people, I think, this season. Second down and ten. This is Mark Edwards. Up to the 20. That's about a yard. So let's find out what's happening with the Hurricanes as we go to John. Well, Keith, Miami's offense has sputtered at times this year, as you know, and against Georgia Southern, a pretty good defense. They only allowed two touchdowns coming into this game this year. Larry Jones fumble, Alex Mack recovers, returns his 28 yards for a touchdown, and Georgia Southern within nine of the Hurricanes. Keith. Well, I'll tell you one thing, that Miami's got to be sore. Well, I, th I think they're having Colorado. a classic letdown, yeah. Keith. Yeah. After a big, tough win at Colorado last week, Bayless pass made. He's got it. He's gone. Touchdown, Notre Dame. Number one, Davis. He ran right out of the arms of Brennan Davis and took it in. Baseball player, Bela, gonna roll out. He played baseball in the spring. He puts it up. Now May's just gonna go up and make the play. Brandon Davis doesn't make it. Notre Dame has the best kept secret at wide receiver of any school in the country. They've got four or five kids that would be outstanding in a, in a true passing for in a, a offense. Kick is good. 13.04 to go. It's 48 to 20. Irish. Chevy announces a breakthrough. Introducing the 94 Chevy S-Series Extended Cab, so new from the inside out. Everything else is history. One of the most innovative real estate companies in America. Number 32 is a player of the future for the Stanford Cardinal, Mike Mitchell, freshman out of Arizona. He's still learning how to get along at this level of competition. Pretty good joke coming out of high school and coming in to play Notre Dame or Washington or whomever, UCLA. He's the, what, the two-time player of the year in the state yep. of Arizona? Yep. But the last five times that Notre Dame has touched the ball, they've scored. This is a high, short kickoff fielded by Ethan Allen. And Allen comes back to the 33-yard line. And there they will go to work. For those of you in along the West Coast and Arizona, we've got the Southern California Trojans and the Arizona Wildcats coming up next. And it's a very important ball game in the chase to the Rose Bowl for the Pac-10 team. Arizona with its defense. 
Southern California with a great history of tailback U and the great running game. Can't run a lick this year, but they sure can pass it. Rob Johnson had a huge outing the last time. A lot of teams around that can't run it anymore. Back goes Stenstrom. He gets protection, drills the ball, and the pass is right on the numbers between the one and the two, and Brian Manning can't reel it in. And it's an incompletion. So 48 to 20, the Irish leading, coming in number four in the country. Next week, next week, uh, Miami and Florida State play. So Notre Dame has a chance next week to move up. Yep. Notre Dame is scoring the last three times they had the ball on offense, and that doesn't mention the kickoff return that they returned. For the last five times they've touched the ball, they've scored. Pass is completed to Mark Harris as Stenstrom finds him, gets time, and it's first down for the Cardinal at their own 47-yard line. I think Miami was really overlooking. This is a, a, a one-double-A opponent in Georgia yeah. Southern. They yeah. were tough, had a tough game on the road at Colorado, and, and then they go home, say, all right, we're playing at home, everything's okay. We're not playing a good Division I school, we're playing Division I double-A, although Georgia Southern is a good school in their class. But I think this is a classic case of just saying, all right, let's get by this one and then look forward next week to Florida State. Plus the fact they were sore. Had to be. Stenstrom lets it go. Down the middle. It's incomplete. Penalty flag is thrown back upfield. It could be holding. And it is. So they're trying to protect the quarterback and the Cardinal get called for holding and the pass off the hands of Mike Mitchell incomplete. One of the things about Georgia Southern, in case you don't know it, when uh, Irk Russell left the University of Georgia and went down there as the head coach, he built a foundation for a team who went on to win two national championships in a row. Yep. So they're not a giddy. No, they're, I say they're a good Ooh. football team in their yep. division. Statesboro, Georgia. 12-21 to play in our football game. The holding call moves the football back to about the 27 where it'll be first down and 20 for Stanford actually it's a 29 yard first down and 29 make it 30 close to 30 Stenstrom sets the screen gets it to Allen Allen loses his footing can't get away Greg Lane makes the contact on him the advance is just beyond the 30-yard line. Nice play by Lane, too, because there was some running room. He had a couple of linemen out there. If he could have got back inside, they have uh, picked up some nice yardage. Greg Lane is a three-year starter for Notre Dame. In fact, he got a lot of experience in this Notre Dame uh, secondary, both he and Burris, Covington, and Taylor, four outstanding players playing behind a very solid defensive line. Stenstrom's passes away. That's got to be interference. He went right up in fact. I'm going to get you a flag up here. I'm going to get you a yellow flag. <laughs> what, didn't he? <laughs> I don't know. Let's, let's take a closer look. I don't think you can throw a flag on that. Really? No, I don't think you can throw a flag. No, I don't. You can't. Yeah, I wouldn't. Not from that replay or those two replays. I would. That's pretty good coverage. All right. Third down and 26. You got to say the uh, officials did a nice job on that one. That pass is complete. Pretty good lick laid on him. And uh, I don't. He's obviously not got the first down because he had to go 30 yards all the way down to the Irish 43. So now they'll have to kick it away. 11-15 to play in a ball game. It's a little slant pattern. Now one man's going to hold him and the other one's going to hit him. That's McGee, 17. Mike Miller with a fair catch. And he will have the ball in his possession at the seven yard line.
RCA 52-inch projection screen home theater. It's bigger and brighter than almost anything out there. Yeah, this is nice. <laughs> like the seats. Lots of room, that's good. Whoa, lots of room back there, too. Right smooth. Real smooth. Ah, they must have fixed this road. Chevy, the most dependable, longest-lasting trucks on the road. Even when it's just barely a road at all. isn't programmed right, 5,000 troops could be cut off. Enemy forces gathered. But I'd never let that happen to my brigade. The Colonel's legendary lost recipe lay misplaced for years till one fateful day. Rotisserie chicken recipe. Confidential. Introducing marinated, slow-roasted Colonel's Rotisserie Gold. At KFC, we do chicken right. sitting down there. They've, it's closer to the eight-yard line. Paul Fela is the quarterback in relief of Kevin McDougal right now. McDougal's got some time to rest. Gives the ball to Zellers. And Zellers pumps along for about five. And here is John Thunder. Well, Keith, Miami and Georgia Southern, they decided to give Frank Goss a rest. So Ryan Collins goes to work. 27 yards. He hooks up with Jonathan Harris. Touchdown on the play, 23 to 7. Meanwhile, a reminder, next week, Miami and Florida State, number one against number three. Charlie Ward had four touchdown passes today. He's waiting for the cage. Keith. That'll stir the pot down there in Miami. We put Collins in. Bela fumble on the snap. They'll start, uh, they'll be uh they'll be working on the uh, quarterback uh, competition down. At least the press will, I'm sure. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. In the Pac-10 today, Oregon and California now in the fourth quarter with Oregon getting out of that big lead and holding on. Oregon State trying to hold on against Arizona State. Those, both of those would be considered upset. Uh-huh. Zellers and Kinder in the backfield for the Irish. That's Kinder. He's down at 15. Oh, that's going to bring up a fourth down and three. And the Irish will punt the ball. Bob Leonard, second kick of the day. He hasn't had much work to do on this trip. And they're going home right after the game. And who is this? Is Oscar McBride? Yes, it is. Tight end. He's hurt, and timeout for him. It's tough. They came in last night, stayed up by the airport, came down here today, played the ball game. Now they're going to go back, get on an airplane, and fly all the way back to South Bend, Indiana. That's a tough day, folks. Well, that's the way a lot of schools do it, though, uh, anymore. Uh, they no, just you have to. Come Why? out and play the game and get home. Yeah. It's too expensive to have to stay overnight any more than you have to. And the they don't want to miss houses. any more class than you have to either. A lot of schools... Uh, really One of the pleasures of the day, that. though, was to have Arrow Parsegian show up. Yeah, old Arrow came by. It was fun to see him. Looks fine. It's always good to see Arrow. Tom Pagna walking around with a brand new knee. It says it's the first time in years he's been that comfortable. It's fun to see him. So this looks serious with Oscar coming off of uh, Veal. Big senior from Sheepland, Florida. Notre Dame uh, has had some injuries today. Uh, earlier, Ryan Leahy, the guard, went out with uh, with a look like look to be a serious injury, knee injury. And now the the bride, who is the backup tight end, was the starter earlier in the year. They're playing on real grass here at Stanford too. It's one of the better turf fields in the country. Bermuda grass. is low for Leonard, but he gets it out, gets some good spin on it. And this is Pruitt. Oh, he's a dancer. He gets back to the 40-yard line. 39-yard punt, 15-yard return, and here comes the Stanford offense. Two summers, two winters, two springs, two falls. 
$2.99 a month. The S Blazer, two-year lease. Why drive an imitation when you can drive the vehicle that originated the species? Chevy S Blazer. Americans have always had a love affair with their cars. Who do you love? Who do you love? Yeah, who do you love? And when it comes to plugs and filters, we guarantee to keep that spark going for a long, long time. Elvira here, mistress of the dark and sometimes surfer babe, because Coors Light is the official beer of Halloween and the party's at the beach, Malibu Beach, where you can hang pins, look, Frankie and Annette, and of course, when it's time to chill, just reach for that cooler of Coors Light, aged, ice cold, never frozen stiff, it's the right beer now for Halloween, just look for the Silver Bowl and smooth display and dig up your friends now for a party at the beach, happy Halloween, dude. 1990, Notre Dame, number one, hosting Stanford. Stanford scored a late touchdown, and then Notre Dame had a chance to win it on this play. Nope, didn't work. Stanford beat them 36-31 at South Bend. We told you coming into the telecast today, the visiting team has won the last four games in this series, about to make it five. Ball is at the 41-yard line. Camella and Mitchell in the backfield now for the Cardinal on first down. This is Mitchell. Oh, you can't dance and prance around like that. You better pick your hole and get to it. Here's Jack. Well, Keith, take another uh, take another Notre Dame player out of the game today. Oscar McBride, the senior from Florida. He has a severely sprained left ankle. The Medicos are going to keep him out for the rest of the game. Incidentally, folks, you're looking at a very fortunate, crazy person in Jack Root. <laughs> I mean, he survived that chase with the Buffalo last week, but I, I couldn't believe it. he's out there running with the Colorado Buffalo. This is Tony Klein making the catch, getting short yardage on the play. And I'm not sure what the crowd's reacting about, but uh, there's something going on. Uh, maybe it was a, a cow game, final of the cow game. Well, that'll get a roar at the Sanford Stadium. <laughs> Just the score of Oregon beating California got a roar at halftime. Third down and seven. Denstrom gets his pass off to Manning. He's got the first down. And he's out of bounds at about the 20-yard line of Notre Dame. Now let's check in with John. Keith, we want to get you up to date in Major League Baseball. It's going to come down to the final day, tied at 103 victories apiece. San Francisco has just closed out Los Angeles 5-3. Atlanta beat Colorado 10-1 was the final there. The final games of the season tomorrow. Keith. My goodness. You know, the sad commentary about that whole thing is can the second best team in baseball, win-wise, is, is going to be left out of the playoffs. Yep. Aren't they going to go to expanded uh, playoffs next yeah, year in baseball? Card, yep. That would include both of them. I think so. Well, it should be. I think the team that wins 101 ball games ought to have a shot at the playoffs. Into the end zone! Incomplete. Pass intended for Mark Harris and intercepted by Sean Wooden. As he was falling, the ball came right to him. He took it with it. Good protection. There's double coverage down here. Wooden from the outside. And looks like Burris. That ball is thrown about as well as you can throw it. Look at Wooden now. Bounce it. Bounce it. Keep dry on it. Arm on it. All right. That's some play. Nice play. Nice uh, call by the official to stay with it and to see it. Highlight reel for that one. Keep the ball alive. They do that in practice all the time, but very rarely do you get an opportunity to do that in a game. 
187 pound junior from Willow Grove, Pennsylvania. Kevin McDougal is back in at quarterback for Notre Dame. Hand off to the fullback Zellers. And about three yards for him. Seven and a half minutes to play in the game. Take a look at the top ten. It seems as though everybody is winning or has won. Nebraska is not playing today. Penn State is later, as is Alabama. Alabama better be careful. Looking they forward better. to our game next week, Keith. Miami and Florida State. Alabama's at South Carolina tonight. Willie Clark still back, has the ball. Go, go, go! Willie's had a good little bit of playing time today, but will not get back to the line of scrimmage on that carry. McDougal is back in, and I really you don't understand the purpose or the need for it. Here's a look at what he's done. He's rushed for 131 yards. No, he's passed for 131, thrown and rushed for 42. Yeah. But the two touchdowns run the option well. Maybe just to give him a little confidence that his back is really all right. But uh, this game is in the bag as far as Notre Dame's concerned. Third down and six. That's Kendrick. Freshman got a start. Mainly because uh, Lee Beckton had uh, pulled a hamstring in practice for the Purdue game. Kinder has run 16 times today with the ball and picked up 104 yards. A look at Beckton. So it's fourth down now, and the Irish will punt it again. They've got enough points, 48 to 20. Brian Ford, brother of Cole Ford, who originally was headed for Vanderbilt, is in the punter. Burn the clock on it, cost them five, and they'll back up five and punt it from there. Enjoyed some of the posturing that Lou Holtz and Bill Walsh were doing this week coming into the game. Lou was uh, poor mouthing his chances. I don't know how we're going to stop those guys. Uh, Bill Walsh is a much better coach than I am. Uh, and of course, uh, Bill was saying some very complimentary things about Lou and Notre Dame. And it was uh, interesting to hear the two of them. <laughs> Low kick, spinner. Takes an Irish roll. And is dead. <laughs> Outside the 35-yard line of Stanford, 43-yard punt for the roll at five and a half minutes to play in the game. regular insurance checkups, just like they get regular medical checkups. I'm State Farm Agent Carlos Bermudez. I have been their State Farm Agent for seven years. A family insurance checkup helps them make sure all their coverages are up to date. It's also a good time to explore options, like how their life insurance plan can be adapted to help with their daughter's college education. I think the family insurance checkup is something everybody can feel good about. State Farm is there. Notre Dame about to go 5-0 on the season. Stanford will drop to 2-3. and three. Justin Armour comes wide to the bottom of the picture. Mitchell and Camella set up at the backfield behind Stenstrom. Here comes Brian Manning on the sweep. The reverse by the wide receiver is good for a first down to the Notre Dame 46-yard line. 
If time permits, we invite you to stay tuned for the thrifty car rental post game report with scores and highlights of games around the country. I think John Saunders has been up about as long as I have today. <laughs> he always has a long Saturday, doesn't he? Ooh. All that hollering and scouting in his ear. I bet you can't hear a thing, Sunday. Pass to the sideline. 35-yard line. They'll move the chains on that. Tennessee winning big uh, again. Schuler with four more touchdown passes. You know, I'm very impressed with that young man. We saw him a couple weeks ago at Florida. Tennessee is not a wide open passing attack. They like to run the ball. In fact, we did the game and commented that they had three guys on their roster with over a thousand yards career wise so they like to run the ball but Schuler is an outstanding quarterback to the corner for armor no depending on the play brian mcgee and the ball uh, armor turned in and then turned back out and uh, then it was too late so the pass is incomplete it's second down and ten To put a guy like Keith Schuler in a system that uh, Bill Walsh has got here, uh, where they throw the ball a lot. Stenstrom is benefiting from the fact that uh, he's under Bill Walsh. They got a freshman, Scott Frost, who Bill was talking about yesterday, is uh, going to be an outstanding quarterback. This is the fourth straight 300 plus game for Stenstrom. Mitchell gets loose, trying to hold on to the ball. And to see where they mark it. Forward momentum, yeah, where do you mark it? I don't know if he had any forward momentum. <laughs> when he lined up, he did. He first yeah. lined up. That may be it. Bobby Taylor's had a big day. The sophomore from Longview, Texas. There's a loss of 18. Loss of 18, I said on the pass reception. Kind of an unusual thing. That's Camella, number 34, coming out of the backfield, losing his footing and falling down for a short gain. All right, Mr. Jackson, let me ask you a question real quick here. We've seen Notre Dame twice. Yep. Both times on the road. We yep. saw him beat Michigan. Yep. And now we see him in an outstanding performance here, uh, whipping up on Stanford. Yep. What is your uh, what is your feeling and your reaction as far as where they should be in the uh, in the uh, national ranking? I think they're right where they should be. Yeah. Four. Kick is away, penalty flag. Good roll. Down it. At the one. Because it really doesn't matter at this point of the season. It doesn't, but I'm just saying, yeah. as, as you watch Lou Holtz get this young man, Kinder, into the ball game, and some other, the other younger players, uh, this Tatum uh, is a true freshman, the guy that started at uh, Nickelback uh, on the defensive side, and some other players, he's getting more and more into the game, and by the time he plays Florida State, he will have a halfback in Kinder who has the speed that he can take it all the way. Uh, so he is gradually strengthening his ball club, and, uh, you know, we've seen two very impressive uh, wins by Notre Dame. Well, the way this uh, season sets up for them now, uh, they're 5-0. and oh. If Florida State beats Miami and goes along, then Florida State goes to South Bend, November. Mm -hmm. That's an edge Notre Dame in that, right? Right. So they could conceivably make their way through the regular season undefeated. Well, you got to give them the edge because they're playing at home, and it's going to be cold weather, you would suspect. But after the penalty, they make Stanford re-kick it, and this time uh, uh, Mills kicks it into the end zone, and Notre Dame, instead of having it back on the one, will have it out on the 20. But I've seen I've seen too much of Florida State that um, that uh, you know Notre Dame is strong, but but. They're not as strong, I don't feel, as as Florida State at this point because of their quarterback situation. Yep, yep. I mean, they can run the option, and, and, and Lou can get him in some situations where he looks good throwing the football one-on-one, -on -one, but he only throws it eight, nine, ten times a game. And, and if you really shut down Notre Dame's run and forced him to play, 
how strong would he be? Yeah. Baylor is in there at quarterback. You had Lytle and Farmer lined up in the backfield behind him. Lytle is number seven and Farmer 31 who just carried the ball there. Farmer is a freshman from Bolingbrook, Illinois, and Lytle is a senior from Bavard, North Carolina. But what I'm saying, Bob, is the thing is set up for them to, to have the potential yeah. for national championship. Oh, yeah, championship you're exactly. I mean, the number they, one team is coming to their backyard. Let's suppose Alabama makes it through and gets past Florida or whomever in, in the championship game in Birmingham. Then that sets them up for a Sugar Bowl game. Right. It, it, I mean, that's you're exactly right. The scenario is there. It's almost in place. And it's interesting that uh, nobody has mentioned uh, anything about a book or, or the controversy. When we were at Michigan, it was swirling. And as soon as he won the big game at Michigan uh, and then has continued to win since then, those uh, thoughts and those questions uh, have really gone away. Adrian Gerald shows up in the ball game. He's the young man from Atlanta who's been hurt for the season. But an outstanding player. This is Dean Lytle with the ball. And he stopped a yard short of his first down. And let's join Jack. Well, Keith, you were talking about that run with the Buffalo when we did the Colorado game. Well, some of the country didn't get to see it, but <laughs> this is the mascot for Stanford. I'm going to run with him now. <laughs> I like this a lot better. Ask him if his mother knows what he's doing. Does your mother know what you're doing? My mother is here today. <laughs> She's a shrub. <laughs> Back to you guys. Oh, there's mom. That's the best looking thing I've seen you with in a long time, Jack. Uh, <laughs> fourth down, they're going to go. A uh, minute and ten seconds to play in the game. They go for the first down. They get the first down, and now they're in position to run out the clock. And uh, this one is put to bed. Notre Dame leading by a score of 48 to 20. And everybody who's got a dry clean shirt on is going to get out there and have a chance to mess it up. <laughs> California has caught Oregon, and a penalty flag stops the play here. College football on ABC Sports brought to you by the 25th Anniversary Diamond for a brilliant celebration of your loving marriage. By Allied Signals Autolite Spark Plug, guaranteed for two years no matter how far you go. By Chevy Trucks, the most dependable, longest-lasting trucks on the road. And by RCA, changing entertainment again. Clock is rolling again. As Fela gives the ball to Lytle. And a whistle stops him as the ball is put down back inside the 25 yard line. Clock continuing to roll. Our... That's going to do it. The clock will expire as Notre Dame beats Stanford by a score of 48 to 20. Four and a half years ago, my father and I were driving our Chevy truck through uh, the Eisenhower Pass in Colorado. The road was complete ice. There was a couple that had gotten out of their car screaming, help, help me, oh my God, I'm getting married, we're stuck, I don't know what to do. My dad jumped out of the truck, he hooked it up to their car, and away we went up the hill pulling their car. I mean, it was just amazing. They invited us to the wedding, but I couldn't go. <laughs> Chevy, the most dependable, longest-lasting trucks on the road. Jet printers from Hewlett Packard. It's easy to make it happen.
of the most innovative real estate companies in America. The leader in individual life insurance. Peace of mind, it comes with every piece of the rock. The Chevrolet, most valuable players of the game. Clint Johnson for Notre Dame, 179 return yards and a touchdown, two killer plays. Stenstrom for Stanford, 34 out of 46. Chevrolet donating $1,000 to each school's general scholarship fund. ABC Sports College Football brought to you by Chevy Trucks, the most dependable, longest-lasting trucks on the road. Final score from Stanford, California, Notre Dame 48, Stanford 20. Thank you.